Welcome to Tinker Tailor Solder Fry, the Let's Try program here on the Mighty Loading Ready Live Video Entertainment Network. My name's Ian Horner, and this week we are joined by... I'm the other Ben, I guess. <laughs> ben South, sure. Yeah. No, that's a terrible... I'm... Mm, hi, yeah. I'm Ben, um, Dandy Geek. What? Yeah. A, yeah. Occasional Ben? Another Ben. Right. Yeah. Ooh, I like another Ben. <laughs> And yeah, we have you on here today for a very special project. That, uh, oh yeah, yeah, we've been brewing this in our heads for a while here. Yeah, I've I've been talking about it for a while, and uh, I have too many other things on my plate at home. Uh, so the only way I could get it done was to bring it up here and say, "Hey, Ian, please let me come over and do this <laughs> on Tinker Taylor." I'm super excited to have you here to get yep. do this. <clears throat> we are putting together a Naomi too. Yeah, well, I mean, it's already assembled. We're not ripping it apart, right. but we are going to uh, wire it up so that we can run it on a VGA monitor. Well, a monitor with a VGA connector, mm -hmm. and then we are going to adapt. Uh, where did those control sticks go? Right there. If you want to lift here. one of those up, um, I'm shortcutting uh, because I got these on the cheap, and they are very easy. To open up. Yep. Um, so, so thank you, Ben. Um, so this also is nice because it keeps all the all the labeling and stuff for their wires, so I don't have to destroy any of that stuff like I did on the last conversion I did. So we'll be able to actually wire this up for this and then switch it back so that it's still functional uh, on the PC. Um, yeah. So that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. A we'll home conversion, I think, is we'll what we decided to, to call that. Yeah, that's normally what they call it. I mean, there's also um, Super Gun was an actual uh, brand of conversion kit for JAMA stuff. Mm -hmm. We're not doing a full JAMA conversion because I don't have a video converter. Mm -hmm. Again, we're cheating because the Naomi 2 um, over here has the VGA port on it because the actual Naomi cabinets had completely different different wiring harnesses from the industry standard. And so we can just use this and even the phono jacks out um, to sort of bypass a bunch of other stuff. Um, whereas with a normal JAMO one, the output would be at a, such a different resolution than anything can normally handle uh, that we would need to run that through a converter uh, board. Mm -hmm. um, so that is what we're working on. Mm -hmm. So just for the, the folks at home who may not know, uh, What's a Naomi? Uh, so a Naomi is the arcade, uh, I guess you would say sister board, of the Sega Dreamcast. And so when the Dreamcast released, part of, um, part of Sega's MO with the entire thing was to be able to provide uh, as close to the arcade experience as possible at home. And to, to that end, the Naomi board was virtually identical to the Dreamcast, except... Uh, you had games on a cartridge instead of on a GD-ROM, and it had, uh, I believe, 16 megabytes, wow, megabytes, <laughs> of video RAM instead of the eight megabytes that were in the Dreamcast. Um, so, uh, so during that era, any fighting game that Capcom made was a one-to-one -one conversion for home. Um, and provided you had decent, you know, fighting sticks or you liked the Dreamcast controller for fighting games. Um, I mean, no judgment if you do, but I just can't. It I was, can't. I need the six buttons. Yeah, um, it was a great controller, but not, not yeah, for fighting games. There, there was, was clearly for. some judgment in there, look. I, <laughs> I mean, there, there was, but, you know, but I really, you know, mostly it is the just, like, I can't do it. I, I get that, you know, everybody has a different controller there, comfortable with, but it's just the, like, I, I, I grew up playing Street Fighter 2 in the arcade, and that's just the way I want to play Street Fighter. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so, uh, so almost everything that was on the Naomi, you could get on the Dreamcast. Um, and I also, uh, I, full disclosure, I have a tremendous amount of n nostalgia associated with this, <laughs> because when I ran a small arcade, there was a single arcade kit that I bought um, new. And there was only one that I bought new. Everything else I bought secondhand or through auctions or eBay or anything like that. And it was Marvel versus Capcom 2. And I bought that kit and that was like, I mean, also it was like when it first came out mm. and it was a money maker. Um, <laughs> and also there was only one other place in town that had it. 
and so, they uh, they didn't fiddle with it, but we knew that the more coins that had gone into the game, the more characters unlocked. So we spent an afternoon with an arm in the game <laughs> pressing the credit me. board <laughs> over and over and over oh. again. Well, because it caps, it, it caps out at credit, so you're not... Per day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just kind of then play through those. It's not like, oh, well, you've got like... 3,000 credits now, um, but it still would register those in the kind of experience on the board. So, so we cheated <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, so that we had everything unlocked faster. Anyway, uh, that's so the, the system. The actual, the actual arcade cabinet mm -hmm. couldn't, couldn't play the other characters. It started and... out with a smaller set of characters and you could only pick one of each character. And eventually it unlocked like alternate costumes for them and it unlocked uh, more characters and then it finally unlocked like the ability to pick three of the same character. So you it's, could be the asshole who picked Cable three times. It's, you know? It just doesn't seem so weird for a sort of professional right. level arcade cabinet to do that. Well, I mean, that again, the thing is, is like the Dreamcast Naomi ecosystem made a lot more sense in Japan because the Naomi hardware, the Naomi um, cabinets that they had, had plugs for the Dreamcast controllers. Right. So you could bring your Dreamcast in with your VMU. And in fact, for Marvel vs. Capcom 2, there were three kinds of experience that you needed to unlock characters uh, at home. Uh, and that was experience playing the game at home, experience playing on Capcom's online uh, net network system mm -hmm. of fighting, and experience playing it in the arcade. And so you would have to take your VMU and your controller in and plug that in, and then you would get credit as you played it. And it was a really cool concept of, as, of a way to kind of revitalize the arcade. I yeah. mean, in Japan's case, the arcade didn't need revitalizing. It was just existing. Um, but uh, but for us, they scr they scrapped all of that stuff out, but they kept the like, oh, over time, this will slowly unlock. And it was an interesting idea, but it was kind of hamstrung because over here, you know, in some North America, we just didn't have any of that yeah, stuff. Some people, for some reason, the idea of carrying around your controller and your VMU in your bag to the arcade right. didn't catch on here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, yeah maybe that we we're used to traveling further to get to stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, but also we just, you know, arcades were not uh, thriving at that point. No. So, so if you had actually, so if you had gone to a, a more popular arcade or an arcade that had this stand up for longer, it right. would actually be a slightly different game. <laughs> yeah, you would have access to other characters. And, and again, and that stuff, I mean, it really didn't take more than like probably the first month or two, I think, for it to really eventually get unlocked, unless it was just hiding in a hole somewhere. But uh, but just, you know, people didn't buy that game, you know, that kit new, and then put it somewhere that wasn't high traffic. Mm -hmm. You know, because you just don't throw, I mean, you're throwing that money down the toilet, yeah, you know, when it's hot and when you would recoup most of your, you know, expenses. It's on, not a gas on, station game. Right. So. I mean, it is, but it's a gas station game like four years down the road, maybe, you know. And even then, not so much because the Naomi system having the carts and then eventually uh, skip, you know, skipping from just a cart to having a cart that had RAM on it and right. then having a GD-ROM unit that you could load the games on and then you had an associated security key to go with made conversion much simpler. So you, you generally would not take a Naomi system and put it, you know, like in your crappiest route because you could always keep it up to date. Um, but yeah, so that's the, that's the Naomi and that's the Naomi system kind of, uh, I already said ecosystem. <laughs> it's it's, it's the, the, the broad strokes. Yeah. So what we're doing here today is we're adapting this for use at home rather than in an arcade cabinet, you know, eventually get to the point where this is something we could plug into a monitor and a pair of speakers right. and play <laughs> relatively plug so, and play at home. Right. So we're taking the the uh the the version of the Dreamcast that was designed for, for the arcade, arcade yeah. and adapting it back to being a Dreamcast. <laughs> right. A cludgier, yeah. more difficult to I mean, but again, some things didn't make it to the Dreamcast and mm -hmm. uh do, 
should I spoil this, or do you want it to be a surprise? Oh, we'll, we'll make that a surprise later. Sure. But there are... I will just say that there are games that there did not make it to the Dreamcast, um, some of which I know Ian is very excited <laughs> to play for the first time. Um, oh, yes. But I'm not going to tell you what that is. Aaron. This stuff that needed that extra eight that cool? megabytes of RAM. <laughs> I guess. Well, I mean, in some cases, you would have things that like did translate back, like you know, like light gun games. Like I think there's a House of the Dead oh, that yes. ran on the Naomi. Yep. Uh, at least one. I I didn't look through the entire list and like you know dedicate it to memory. I think there was oh. a Time Crisis was not on this. No. I had someone who was someone in the chat was definitely excited about that. So we can yeah, put that I, room I under bed. I don't think Time Crisis was on. I could no. be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that Namco had their own system because they used a different system for that. Uh, you know, for Tekken at the time, and like. Sega had previously had the STV, and then there was like a Triforce board that Nintendo was also involved in. Um, there, the Naomi is not unique in being a cartridge-based system. Um, one of the earlier ones that I know is the Capcom CPS2 system um, that uh, Super Street Fighter 2 was released on, and then Street Fighter Alpha, and then all of the um, Vampire Savior games, or... Uh, What's the other? Darkstalkers is yes. the other name for big, that. Big, um, uh, and those were bigger. Instead of being like this where the cart is kind of small and then the board is larger, the whole board and cart were the same size and it was a sandwich and you would just take the top one off and put a new one in and then you could switch over. Oh, the uh, Dungeons & Dragons uh, Shadow Over Mystara is another uh, okay. CPS2 game. Um, but yeah, so like cartridges in the arcade as far as like uh, a manufacturer's ecosystem were not uncommon by this point. That kind this of is just a standard at that point. Yeah, this is just one that I really like because a lot of really solid Capcom games happen to come out on it. You know, Power Stone, Power Stone 2, uh, Capcom versus SNK and CVS2 I was and yeah. joking with Graham that what we should just do is just Load it up with uh, Crazy Taxi oh. and leave it in attract mode out in the friend zone. Oh, you're a monster. <laughs> oh. Crazy Taxi. You just really wanted people to like listen to uh, the Offspring, right? I I'm, try offspring? I'm trying to make this experience of working here to be as much like my uh, university anime club as possible, so we need... <laughs> wow. Didn't Crazy in Taxi the literally come out for every single system? Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh. So I guess the real innovation for this this thing as opposed to other arcade cabinets is that it was so close to the desktop to, to the, it was to it the was console. really the like that you you generally knew oh if I get this on Dreamcast it's going to be just like the arcade version and so if you had an arcade that was local that you had a community at which you know I didn't entire I mean obviously I did once we got Capcom versus I mean Marvel mm -hmm. versus Capcom two because I was there every afternoon um, after work um, uh, uh, murdering people and getting murdered. Um, by the way, uh, Dan, Zangief, and Colossus is a real fun combo oh, to that play. that sounds a um, little OP. Yeah, it's mean. It's mean. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, and so that was the thing is, is you could play at home and kind of well, practice. What basically. a coincidence! That's a slash yeah. fiction that I just I just read the other day. Oh, that's a. <laughs> mm, that's got to be real sweaty that's and lots be a of tough time for Dan. Yeah, <laughs> a lot, a lot of clang. Well, I mean, I think we know how that ends, yeah. which is Dan screaming, "Oh yeah, <laughs> <clears throat> Oof. Uh, Come on! It was right there. <laughs> you, you just yeah. If you line up the shot, I'm gonna yep. take it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, other nice yeah. things about the Naomi board too are the networking involved in it. That you oh yeah, can string these things together into large, which is I mean I look forward to playing a lot of uh, horse racing uh, management simulators. Oh, of course, <laughs> right. Well, I mean the controls were all weird on that, right? Yeah. I wonder if you'll be able to figure that out. <laughs> um, yeah. So the network port was a was a late addition to the cartridge that came with the GD-ROM, mm -hmm. and that allowed for games to just take a security key and then have another game in the daisy chain of like eight that were all like the horse racing sim or the horse management sim mm -hmm. to well, load from a single, uh, a single, from instance. A single instance. But right. then it would actually use fiber optics right. to do the actual networking between the games right. themselves. Yeah, which I don't remember which connector I don't that either, hooked up but on. But <laughs> we're, we, not, we, we're not doing anything with that. Yeah, we're not doing that right now. Yeah. 
So, I think it's time for us to actually get started with some work here. Yeah, I think so. Um, so that's a pile of wire. Yeah, I mean, this is the most amount of wire. And did I get two of them together? No, I just got one. Um, so this connector and, uh, and all the ensuing wires is basically the uh, central nervous system of an arcade uh, cabinet. Um, it's called a JAMA harness. I heard you say that before. Yeah, and a JAMA is, is an industry standard that they established basically once uh, arcades started to get popular and uh, all the different companies who were making games uh, would just recreate, like they would make different uh, wiring setups for different games. Everything was bespoke. Yeah, essentially, and it was a huge pain in the ass. And so with JAMA, they it agreed on an, on an established type of connector that you would terminate your uh, logic board with. And then on this end you had, well let's see, over here is power, this section here is video, and these are all like the control wiring, and this is ground. Video has I think another ground in here somewhere, I don't remember, and then mono audio was in it. And so JAMA standard allowed for uh, two players, uh, start buttons for each, independent coin slots for each, um, three buttons for each, and then the four, uh, four main uh, directions, and then like an eight-way joystick could trigger two directions at once, and et cetera. And so that meant that rather than needing to get an entirely new cabinet when you bought a new game, you could buy a conversion kit, which had like the marquee graphics and the side graphics and then the logic board, mm -hmm. and then spend less than an hour opening up the back of the cabinet, taking out the previous logic board, putting the new one in, and just connecting it to the harness, and you were good to go. Um, so this was a huge deal for arcades, and, uh, and we're gonna use this um, because, uh, yeah, because this is just part of the system, and also because it allows me to use um, the Capcom uh, adapter for the Naomi. So there was also a Sega I.O. board, um, but the Capcom one is the one that I like because it has the kick harness on it and also because you can run the audio through it and it has an amplifier in it and mm. a pot so that you can adjust volume on it, um, which was obviously really helpful uh, in an arcade board or in an arcade cabinet, excuse me. Um, but we're gonna use that uh, for all of our input stuff rather than fiddling with this. And actually on the back side, you'll see that we have some other connectors here, and the USB is actually where all the input stuff comes in. And then normally you would run the video through it, and then it would get converted for JAMA. But instead, we're just going to pump that straight to a monitor oh, because okay. we just are going to skip, yeah, double in conversion, basically. Yeah. And also because video cards, the video conversion cards you either buy from someone for a significant amount of money, which is to say, like... I think the last time I looked at them, they were around 100 US, okay. something like that. But um, And they're fiddly. Right. They're very fiddly. They're very sensitive to interference and all kinds of other fun things like that. And there's no reason for us to do that conversion when the Naomi already has a VGA port. <laughs> um, and we've already discovered in chat what JAMA stands for, too, which is oh, good. Oh, good. So. <laughs> uh, what, what was the actual... Uh, the Japan Amusement... Oh, I have to scroll back now. Uh, Japan, Japan, amusement. Japan Amusement Machine and Marketing Marketing. Association. That's yeah. right. That's Good job, Japan. J-A-M-M-A. -M -M -A. Not to be confused with J-A-M-A. -M -M -A. The hmm. Journal of American Medical Association. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whole, I, whole different deal. I know there are a handful of them, but if you're in... And I, I assume these guys still do it. There's a different guy that is, I don't know, has some kind of pirate theme to his auctions that is based out of California, but does arcade auctions and allows... Uh, online bidding at them. Obviously, you have to make arrangements to, you know, have a cabinet shipped <laughs> to you. But if you're interested in that kind of thing, there's that. And the ones that I used to go to were run by a company called Super Auctions, which I think still does some arcade auction stuff. And it's a neat, it's a neat experience, even if you just kind of go for their preview, where you um, bring an extension cable and connect up a game to test it and make sure it works. <laughs> but it's just a like show up and go you know, play all the games that are there for sale. Um, but uh, that's a whole other thing. So <laughs> um, I have a handful of wiring stuff I know needs to go in. A big thing we need right now, Ian, is this is the power. Oh. And 
I don't think we have this kind of connector. Nope. So we need to adapt that mm -hmm. to uh, a wall. Yeah, a standard IEC. Good. Yeah, and I uh, I don't even remember what I chopped that off of, huh. but it's dead now. And Sorry. We're missing ground, so. Well, we don't have ground on. Yeah, the I mean, there's not so perfect. Right, there's not ground on this, but you could probably wire ground to the ground yep. screw. Oh, dang, that would work. Yeah, I think that's the safest deal there. Pretty easy. Um, I'm gonna let you. Sure, I will take, take the care helm of that. on that. Thank you. I've got somewhere over here. I think I've got it. No, I put it over. No, those are connectors. Sorry, everybody, it's gonna crinkle a bit. Um, oh, here it is. I have a rocker switch if you want to deal with that. But also, if you want to just plug it in and it powers on, that's what I did with the other one. Let's power and plug uh, power on, because what mm -hmm. I think I might do in future then, uh, rather Is than ro rocker switch it, have an on cable rocker switch. I'll leave that to you. Yep. That's an exercise for the viewer. Wait, no. So while I'm taking care of power, what are you going to be doing? Dealing with well, here? honestly, I'm going to kind of get my cables together for all the Naomi connection stuff, because I think our primary deal, I think the first thing we want to do is have power ready so that we can connect it and see it boot. Mm -hmm. And then that's a good start. And then we're going to have to, the bulk of the work that we're going to have to deal with, honestly, is taking the wiring from the JAMA harness because they've already got our uh, base set of wires terminated to plug into um, oh, thank the arcade connector. However, the majority of them are for uh, US connectors, which are a little larger oh. than the Japanese connectors that are in those sticks. So we can kind of wire this stuff out and get, uh, and get the sticks working. And then the kick harness, where is my kick harness? Under all this other stuff instead of in front of me. <laughs> That is part of another harness that I chopped up that I kept. Um, uh, yet more chopped up and spares. Any time you can avoid doing both sides of a cable is time well spent. Right. I mean, that's kind of... Oh, here we are. Yeah, so this is, this is the kick harness um, uh, that, that uh, plugs into that extra uh, wiring harness on the uh, Capcom converter. Uh, also known as a CPS2 kick harness and a number of other things. It doesn't have a lot of wires, but it's enough wiring that you can add the three kick buttons for each of the two players uh, on oh. a Capcom system. <laughs> That's why it's called a kick harness? That's literally why it's called a kick <laughs> harness, yeah. And then they're actually also still used for uh, four-player games and three-player games like uh, Aliens vs. Predator or the four players like the D&D uh, games to be the... Uh, the second, I mean, the third and fourth uh, player controls. Oh. So, so the, the default Gemma harness only supports three buttons per player? Three buttons you? per player. I mean, right. not counting, and like, so wanted, start. So they wanted but, six buttons per player. Right, because, so the original Street Fighter, the very first version of Street Fighter, had giant pads that were pressure sensitive. The idea being you would slam the punch one and how hard you hit it was whether you got weak, medium, or or really? fierce punch, wow. and the same for kick. And then they went, "This is dumb. Also, it's breaking a lot, and it's enormous, and it's proprietary. How about we just break this out into three buttons and three buttons?" And then that is the standard that they rolled forward with for Street Fighter Two and pretty much every easier. Street Fighter since. Yeah. It's way easier because you have a lot more nuance and control. I mean, the first one's kind of fun, but the thing about arcades is you always get someone where if you have a thing that encourages them to wang it harder, they're going to wang it as hard as they can, and they're probably going to break it long before you ever want to surface well, it. This reminds me of the old pressure sensitivity in the PlayStation 2. Right. The first games that came out with that you actually used it, and mm. I could never tell nope. when we were doing a, a light touch or... Yep. Yeah, it, well, and like, the best story I remember about um, people using arcade machines and being morons when it comes to interesting control or whatever was Atari had a couple of tester, like, hardcore testing uh, systems that they tried out. And one of them was um, 
Battle Tank. Remember Battle? I think it's Battle Tank oh, no. or Battle Tank 2000 or something like that. Uh, it's a very old vector graphics game where you would look into oh, like the yes. periscope and you had twin sticks that you would use to control your tank. And what they did is they added electrodes to the joysticks so that when you took a shell, you would feel it. Oh. And they added. <laughs> That's not good. No, that's not the bad part, because it was very mild. But what they did is they added a dial for how bad the shock oh, was, no. so that you could adjust it for yourself, you know, for like what your kind of pain threshold was, essentially. Wow. And what they found was basically they couldn't get any useful information because the idiots who played it would just go up to it after like two beers, crank it to max, and go, I'm a man, I can take it, and then just drive into as many shells as they could before they died. The I idea in game, being, I assume you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, sure, let's go with in game. Yeah. I mean, I feel like if that's, you know, if that's how you approach problem solving, then. <laughs> you might right. see some crossover. Sure. But, uh, but yeah, that was the thing is, is their idea was oh, it would make you play smart because you would then not want to get hit mm -hmm. by shells, so you'd be more careful. And in fact, the opposite happened where yep. people just went, oh. Instead, we get people milgram experimenting themselves. Right. So I guess what I'm saying is. Um, for uh, Desert Bus this year, mm -hmm. uh, can we get some electrodes for I, uh, when you crash? I should probably uh, fill you in on uh, the idea for the hot seat that we've already put on the Tinker Tailor mm. list. All right, well, you beat me to it. <laughs> I, think we, we, we're, we're I feel like a few of the drivers may have some... Serious uh, objections? Serious, well, questions, let's mm. just say. Yeah. I think we're looking at a definitely a... Great mind situation here, or at least vindictive and. Mm. Oh boy! All right. Well, right. Uh, now that I made this mess of wires near me, could I'll... you pass me that uh, master grip? Of set? course. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Actually, it reminds me of the story we just did on checkpoint, where uh, their uh, Blizzard has decided to remove the game feedback option in Overwatch. Overwatch, when you you know finish the game, there it says, "How was the game? Was it good or bad?" Oh yeah. And they decided to remove it because they found that all anyone ever did with it was, "Did I win? It was a good game. Did I lose? It was a <laughs> bad, bad game. game." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's exactly the same kind of. Uh, someone in chat suggested you could alternately pop open the case and go directly to the board Ooh, instead of yes. on these wires, that's so you don't have to splice. Actually, that's cleaner and yeah. nicer. Thank you. I missed where there it is. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. An Aran? Oh, sure, let's go with that. Um, well, somebody yeah, can correct thank me. You. That's but thank you. That's a fantastic solution. Super, super useful. Um, that and it eats time, too. Over here. Mm. All right. So I'm just going to connect up some of my happy fun time power and see where my splice through is. You. Did I have two of these? No, can't be, right? Oh, of course it is, because I'm a genius. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just imagining like cutting to like one hour later, and the two of you are just somehow tied up completely in, <laughs> in wire. Yeah, I mean, we're not far cables. off from it. Yeah. yeah let's get that in there. Oh let's yeah. Well, I mean, I You'll put this on without around, paying but... more attention to whether or not I needed to put that one on. Um, do, 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 do. This screwdriver brought to you by iFixit. <laughs> How do you like the iFixit set? Yeah, you know what? It's been in the same box with this whole thing for <laughs> uh, I don't know how long. So <laughs> it's fine. I liked it enough to buy it. I'm really glad I have all these bits. I'm super glad that I discovered that I still owned it. Um, <laughs> but I clearly have not used it much um, in the last, like, year and a half. Um, I'll just put that over there. I think this is definitely the most uh, material we've had on the desk for Tinker Tailor. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of a mess. I, I, mean, I mean, yeah. You're yeah, I, I said it. <laughs> just blanket statement. It's, it's not wrong. Uh, there um, we go. It's not a bad quote. Yeah, okay, so... The assumption. See, the other thing here is, so I've got um, 
I've got all of the kind of cables, and I'm just trying to make sense of, because I've not hooked the GD-ROM to itself, yeah. which so, end I want to hook it to and how much, how far I want it away from the main board. So remember earlier how we were talking about uh, grounding this? Uh -huh. It doesn't seem to be much point to that. Oh, because it's a, uh, well, uh, yeah. That uh, doesn't uh, appear, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll ground it anyway, but. I mean, you, well, so if it's grounded on the chassis, is there a ground that comes through in these? There, that's a good question. Probably, because this is the, so where's, where's our brown boy here go? He goes underneath. Then it probably mounts to the chassis and that's probably the ground here and it yeah. ties back to the ground on the board. Generally, I mean, yeah, I see that screw as a like, oh, well that doesn't seem to do anything, but you know, yeah, I probably... remember that the power comes through that end and goes this way and yeah, yeah. I bet there's a contact somewhere on the bottom here. Yeah, we don't want to leave that okay, out. Okay, so. <laughs> you know, I should probably figure out, is that the way or is that the, no. <laughs> yeah, I should look at that the actual pin out. Clip that. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it always makes me feel good when they put a piece of tape on the bottom <laughs> and scrawl OK on it. <laughs> I mean, I know that's Is so you remember. Is it better than there not being a piece of tape that says OK? Oh, I mean, it's definitely <laughs> better. I mean, but then like... you would know it's OK. Yeah. Now, do you know the uh, the provenance of this board? Where it this came board? From? I mean, I, I know that I... Or, I bought it from someone on eBay, just like I bought the, the NetBIOS in GD-ROM came from someone in Spain, mm -hmm. I think. Okay. Which is why Namco Europe Limited is on the side. Ah, uh, okay. So I'm trying to decide whether or not that's cigarette smoke or not. Oh, I'm sure it is. <laughs> I'm sure that it is. Uh, oh, did I, I pulled this up here somewhere, right? There we go. No, oh, yeah, I'll just solder that right to the board. Make it nice and clean. No caffeine. I need a better. Oh, hey guys, what's so, up? Question from the chat: mm -hmm. uh, Do you have any idea of when this last was plugged in or operated as a arcade thing? In an arcade. Or even just was operational? Well, I mean, this would have been tested uh, before I bought it, the GD-ROM unit. I mean, they both were. Clearly, um, it's okay, so. Yeah. Right, obviously yeah, it's I mean, it tested. says okay on it, so it must be, I mean, well, that's one of the reasons why you always want to plug a thing in. Um, but, uh, GD-ROM, okay, so that's the, do, 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 do. sorry, I'm just identifying my cabling here. Oh, perfect. Oh, it's red on that side. Well, that's helpful. All right. So that goes with the guard up. Oh, wow. This um, power supply has adjustments. Uh, yeah, it does, because it puts out um, a couple of different volt voltages that I think you sometimes need to fi fine tune. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, again, I, I just haven't picked this up um, since I got the stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, they've been booted up to test before selling because usually when, I mean, what happened, like, especially with the Naomi is, is you'll see it connected and then they'll show you like the load screen for something or just the test board with like all the ROMs showing is okay. Um, before you purchase a thing. So it's just literally been in storage in a box oh. for, you know. Over a year. That's not a problem at all. Uh, okay. Ben, mm -hmm. could you mm. uh, Sorry. wander over to my bag over there, the, the tool bag, and get to me the solder? <laughs> get unto me. The solder. Thine solder. <laughs> uh, it should just be in the main pocket. Feel free to just root around as you will. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, yep. Is that where you want it? You want to oh, yeah, maybe relocate that so it's not there. pointing at my yes. chest? Actually, I'll bring that over here for yeah. first use. Yeah, you might want to 
you might want to commandeer that while I'm just <laughs> literally plugging things together and making sure I don't screw it up. Okay, so... Is that power supply just a sort of generic power supply, or is it a this special... This is a specific Sega, like, Sega slash Sega Naomi power supply. Yeah. So, and the reason that I get this is because the Naomi has its own set of... Uh, power connectors and wiring, and also you need one of those instead. Like normally, you could just power everything through this Capcom harness, which is why it's got this power connector here. But um, but rather than do that, it's easier Perfect. to use this, especially with the GD ROM, because you need the extra juice that's in this for the GD ROM. Um, so I feel like. I could put it on this end, or I could put it on... I don't know. Well, how long is our... Let me look at my sweet SCSI 2 cable over here. Oh, I do love that it comes with SCSI 2. Yeah! What? I know. Well, it's what, a very what, stiff cable. What's the GD Diff part of GD-ROM stand for? It's been, gigabyte disk, I believe yeah, it was. Yeah, gigabyte oh, disk. It's been bugging me. It's yeah, like, well, it's so, like a, CD-ROM is like compact disk. Yeah, well, so... <laughs> They were, Gargantuan discs. I mean, they were like, you could cram more stuff on them, and it was also a situation where they were trying to uh, prevent piracy because technically it was a different format. And then it turns out it was not that hard to bypass, and then what people wound up doing was they would, uh, I think they would do some compression with sound and some other things like that. Sound, to, sound textures and some, FMVs. Yeah, and they would... It, so that they could cram it onto a regular CD-ROM with uh, with basically a bootloader uh, built in, and so that they could fit it on a CD instead of you know the gigabyte disk, um, which is not great. It didn't work out well for Sega. No, the format did not catch on, but. Do, do, do. Boy, this is a beefy cable. All right. So, why don't we have a... Oh, sorry, Ian. That's all right. I should not bump your arm <laughs> while you're prepping Ooh, to... Ooh, yeah, you know what? We've done the, the the bad thing again. Oh, the, like, left and right... We sure yep. did. That's my mistake. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. Hope uh, we're not soldering any or testing anything that's currently plugged in, so... Well, the good news is I don't really think that there's anything that strictly needs soldering after you finish that. Yeah. I mean, there's stuff where you could solder, but I don't think it's that necessary. Um, I oh, so this is a short this. cable, so I don't want this to sit here. So I want it to... We'll put it over here, say. Let's do that. All right. So that's... We'll put that bypass through right here. That works for me. I'm okay with this. And then that way we can connect this. I really want you to be more pliable, but you aren't. And we can connect that there. Oh, we're going to have to put that chip in too. Um, there's a chip taped to the GD-ROM, which is basically the net the uh, NetBIOS security chip, which allows games to be loaded on from this. Um, so the other thing about that is I kind of have to verify that we put that on the uh, <laughs> in the correct direction. Very uh, important. Yep. Otherwise, uh, it would be not so great for us. Chip will have a bad time. Hmm. All right, so, yeah, geez, it's just so beefy. Uh, well, so that, that security chip is really the only thing that separates that from just a regular, like, CD-ROM drive or whatever, right? Yeah. In terms of... I mean, so normally when you would buy a kit, the, the chip you would get actually was kind of like a key plug. And so you could just plug it into this slot here and it was easy to pull with your fingers rather than like, no, drop an IC chip straight in and then use pullers <laughs> to pop it out. Like, they recognized that the people who serviced arcades were maybe not going to be doing that very much. Paul, can you mute me for a second, please? Uh, yes. Thank you. Oop. Just to grab another thing 
more bits. Let's see, I wouldn't put it over by the fan system. And I don't think, no, that's, that's folly. It's definitely going to go on the other side. Welcome back, Ian. <laughs> Thank you. I, I guess in an arcade cabinet, these would have been mounted directly to the back Yeah, you of would the normally mount them. And, like, there is there are holes on the bottom here that clearly, you know, had a mounting plate attached. But this one doesn't. And that's fine. I'm sure that we can figure out something to do with that. Um, so, I know how that goes. And then... This is my double. So here we go. I'll let the webcam come examine the solder sucking if it so desires. Just one sec. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's the business. Let's get the... There we go. Get the focus. Suck it. This is... A little premature there, I think. That's beautiful, though. One more. Ah. Uh. should come out pretty easily. Hmm. It's interesting. I thought you would have to actually come into contact with it, with that sucking thing, but... Nope. That's interesting. That's cool. Is, they get both... Oh, they got both sides. That's why. Oh. Well, they that, gotcha. That's yeah. how they get you, Ian. <laughs> That's how they get you. Hey, um, what can I? Oh, I you? just was gonna. I wanted to grab one of the sticks and yep. kind of start oh, fiddling oh. a little bit with those control are gonna while be you... bit, Those are gonna be pretty fiddly. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're just they're just kind of plugging wires in and going. Nope, I did that wrong. Nope, I did that wrong. Which is not entirely true. I have pinouts of the harness. Um, both harnesses, actually. Um, Hold on, I'm gonna take that my... That is so pleasing. The... Oh, yeah. that, that... This is opener. so over-engineered, but I love it. I'm, I'm... Look, I'm just gonna play with this. Open and close again and again. That's so good. Um, I'm gonna put a little dry ice in there, so it's like... Whoosh. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, right, that's their turbo connector and all that jazz. Yikes. Man. That's oh, <laughs> good God! That sounds good. I love that so much. Micro switches make me a very happy person. Yeah, I really, I'm a big fan of these. I think they're Sunwa sticks. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what they used. Very satisfying. There's a American style um, ball in here for the top that you can replace. Which, why would you do that? Um, these are better if you're sitting down. Um, and then see all of our connectors here. I mean, the other thing that's nice here is they have not, um, uh, they have not glued all of these together, which the Mad Cats, I definitely had some glue I had to get through. Razor has seemed to kind of understand this, this I, is... Yeah, I just because there's so much empty space in there. I guess yeah. the, the size of it is more for the, uh... For the base weight? Well, also, the bottom has this kind of hexagon sort of... Ben, can you push in on this? And, uh, um, so this bottom here, uh, that little hex hexagonal, like, that's all so that you can screw stuff down. So they built this with the understanding that people would mod it, and mod it a lot. Right, And right. put in a lot of space for you to put, like, breadboards and stuff 
mounted down here. Whatever crazy stuff yeah. you want to install. Which I know that Ian will probably do a lot more of. Because under all of this stuff, see, like, everything that's screwed down over here, like this little hide thing that hides all of the cables being pulled into their uh, breakout connector cable, which is in here, this is stuff that you can unscrew and just kind of remove. I'm not going to mess with that because we don't need to. Um, not right now, anyway. Uh, but eventually, we will probably want to punch a hole in this so that we can run actual the wiring to an arcade out of that um, without uh, interfering with any of the other stuff that they have at play here. So, where does that cable go? What are you... What are you connected to over here, weirdo? There's nothing... Start and... That's a weird one. Huh. Where'd you go? Oh, that bottom's very pleasing. Um, I should pay attention to what I'm saying. <clears throat> you could put like a sandwich in there. Like you could be, that could be your lunchbox. Yeah, box. your own little lunchbox. Yeah. Between, between games of Street Fighter, if you get a little hungry. Yeah, it's interesting because that wire runs over here and then... Is that... I don't, I don't know. You got me. It doesn't run all the way around. It stops somewhere over here, so maybe there's... So I don't want to take any of that apart because it doesn't serve. Um, but let me turn this sideways so that I can get in here. I do, however, want to pull all of these off. And where did I put... Did I bring those pliers? Yeah, Which? they're... I don't... You, you do your thing. Um, they're over here, I think. And I don't want to bump you, so I'm going to reach and make this a dangerous game. There we go. Okay, with, with, with no current flowing through this, it's a lot uh, less of a problem. Right. Well, I mean, it's also the thing of like, I'm gonna close this and turn this the other way so that when I pull, I'm not pulling an elbow towards your face. I appreciate that. Yeah, well, I mean, I am gonna use my offhand, but what are there was a, for? There's a question in the chat for is is that um, the those the arcade fl fight sticks there are those available as just like an empty box? They never sold them as an empty box. So these are um, the version of the I don't know Atrox I think is what they called it. Yeah, Atrox um, for the 360, and they have newer ones that are uh, ridiculously priced um, for the Xbox One. Um, but uh, these are still USB. They work perfectly fine on a PC because Xbox drivers. Um, but uh, yeah, that's yeah. They don't sell it kind of gutted like this. Honestly, if you were if you were doing this, you could take if you could find an old stick that used decent parts or like the what is it the RAF or whatever for the PlayStation that a different manufacturer makes. Like there are plenty of sticks that use genuine arcade parts where then you could open it up and convert it if you wanted to. But you also could just uh, buy arcade parts and make your own enclosure for them. Um, because, you know, especially if you are okay with chopping up a couple of bits of, you know, like particle board or MDF. MDF is probably better than particle board. And, uh, and then putting together kind of a small desktop enclosure. It's actually a thing uh, I want to do, um, but there's some hardware that I'm still waiting on uh, to actually ship, where I would like to kind of do some laser engraving on a surface, <laughs> fun stuff like that. Boy, these are really not coming off. Mm, same with these pins. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> it's having its... It wouldn't be TTSF without yeah. some kind of issue like you know, this, right? Ha ha! I don't even need the pliers. Shows what you know, dumb pliers. <laughs> Whereas I'm just going to trim some bits of that pin right off. <laughs> that works. So, either pull harder or cut it off is what we're, what yeah. we're learning today. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Mm. Good, good life advice. Best life advice. No, that's that's terrible advice. Yes. Do not take all advice yeah. or most advice from this show. Yeah, my secret tech here is wiggling. That's honestly what it is. I hate 
I okay. do not enjoy the like, hey, I feel like I'm gonna rip this open, even though it's fine. Yeah. But I just I don't like applying pressure to things. I mean people, whatever, but it's knowing when that when the breaking point is. Yeah. And it's Again with people. Yes. <laughs> Uh, we're terrible humans. All right. Well, that's those. I suppose I can do these. There we go. That's one. Whew. Now that I have some knowledge about this one, maybe I can get the other one to come out a little bit faster. Whoops. There we go. All right. Oh, That's yeah. a nice clean hole. Right, we're both on that. Yep, nice done. All right, so I've just pulled off all of the connectors on the buttons um, so that I can put quick connects onto them from uh, the wiring harnesses that we already have. Now the big difference um, from the wiring that they do for uh, for these controllers is they're using like paired cables where, oh, these two go on this thing, and then it doesn't matter uh, which is which. Whereas in the arcade, you're doing, uh, everybody gets a ground, and it's, it's usually important which one that is, because which one the ground goes on, and which one the active wire goes on kind of defines like, oh, is this by default uh, treating the button like it's being pushed, or treating it like it is not being pushed? And so, uh, yeah, when they're not clearly labeled on the actual uh, switches, then sometimes you have to do a little trial and error. Um, and I don't remember with Sanwa, they may actually not care on Sanwa. Um, they may have designed it better than uh, HAP and the uh, Cherry switches, but we'll see. And then the, gosh, this is really just bundled up, guys. Uh, and then the actual arcade stick over here has its own little control or little plug, little connector that is specific to this. I mean, it's not specific to it, but compared to the just put a quick disconnect on your golden, um, this is a little wiring that has a single uh, ground because the, um, the switches here uh, are all soldered into these little Boards and so the um, the ground is connected across all of them, um, which means you have five wires in here instead of needing to put in eight. Uh, so, yeah, at least I think that's how this one's set up. That's how the last one. That's how they normally are. <laughs> so, is the plan to uh, sort of splice this in so that it will still operate? Yeah, so that we can reconnect to these things and it will still function connected through USB to something. So, like a PC. So when you push the button, it will send a signal out both to USB and to the harness. Well, the smart the smart way to generally do that is to either set up a switch. In this case, the best way to do it would be to wire to these and then have a switch that is a hard switch so that you're sending to one or the other. Ah, uh, okay. And then you just pop this open and flip that switch. And so, like, if you were going to connect USB, then you would, you know, plug this into the front and plug it to, you know, an Xbox 360 or a PC. Um, but uh, for now, because we really are mostly focused on getting controls up enough that it functions, um, I want to just get stuff connected so we can start testing controls on the... Uh, on the um, uh, on the service menu on the Naomi, Mercano. That's that's my ideal goal there. Where what's up? Well, I was just going to say, Mercano asks, uh, do the sticks use switches or potentiometers? These are oh. going to be button uh, switch based. They're all sticks. switch based. Um, yeah, I don't. Most arcade stuff isn't really using, I mean, at least most of the stuff that I have worked on, I should say. Analog seems to be a rarity within the Yeah, well, arcades. there were, so even with, like, uh, the Pac-Man games, they they used leaf switches. Oh, wow. You know leaf switches? Yep. Yeah, so leaf switches would still be like a cherry switch, but then there would be this long piece of metal that when you would press the stick, instead of clicking that tiny switch, it would push the metal to the connector. And so it had this 
floatier feel to it than this kind of clicky thing. But at the same time, those those bits of metal would bend, and eventually, like the you know, you had a lot of service issues with that. Um, and uh, yeah, like I know, I think NFL Blitz used what they called a ninety-nine way switch, and I think that was you <laughs> That's know their idea of. Yeah, which was like more of an analog kind of thing. And then HAP actually makes a, a HAP, I think, what was it, Perfect 360 might be the, the <laughs> stick that they make, uh, which is, uh, I think, optical sensors. Oh, that's an interesting um, one. I really like the way those sticks feel, but you have to wire them to power. Um, oh. So instead of all of these where you basically have the switch and ground, um, you would have to do all that, and then you would have to do a 5-volt uh, rail uh, from the JAMA harness, which, again, you have, but it was just an extra thing that you would need to do. I put those into one cabinet, um, and they were pretty great. Um, my, my general preference was to get, like for American-style cabinets, was to get a... Um, uh, I just... Oh, that's what I needed. Um, was to get a HAP... Uh, like I, one of their sort of performance style sticks and request the hard spring oh. instead of the soft one that they would by default put in because uh, while the hard spring was really murder on you, like when you would release that stick, it wouldn't do the whirr everywhere it would just as much. Yeah, a little more. And then once it was broken in, it felt very good. Mm. Um, and that's, that's also a reflection of the machines that I originally started playing Street Fighter on, too, is that they were kind of like that before, yeah. Interesting sort of uh, preferences that you that, that can be had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I still feel that the softer sticks are not great for this kind of game. Um, I just don't think that's how they... You know what, maybe I tried to disconnect the wrong one first. Guys, what happens if I take this off? Okay, so Are you glued need... on? Is that what the deal is here? I can't see this. Sorry, I'm going to have to it's turn okay. this. It's okay. I'm going to need to engage my third hand here as well. Well, so I'll be going silent for the next couple minutes. Oh. <laughs> I, on the other hand, am going to make a lot of squeaky noises and hide my work. We we need to make a a thing that will hold hold solder for you, Ian, and also be a kazoo. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I think that just means you need another operator in the room. Ah, there we go. And mm. off. Ooh, there's a whole lot going on in there. Yep. Um, this is definitely Good solid join. Sanwa standard. Hmm. Excuse me. That probably went right into the <laughs> level here. I apologize. Yeah. So this is, yeah, they haven't done anything screwy with it. They didn't glue it on, which is great. Um, so that's the standard connector for a Sanwa. Let me turn this around. Um, it was just kind of wedged in there? Yeah, it's just that it was up against this other stuff. There's like a, there's a little, uh, plastic sort of hook that they had laid all the cabling under and it's right in the way of pulling this out. So it's just five, it's it's uh, four of them are just the cardinal directions, the up, down, left, right, um, and then the fifth is the ground for all of them. Uh, the downside is I don't think we have another one of these on us so we will kind of do a hack job uh, in the meantime. I of course left those where I need to reach past Ian. And he is just, in the middle of something. So now's a great down. time to have some water. <laughs> that that ribbon cable has more than five lines on it. Eh? I mean, it? it's only got five. Well, here, let me. No, I mean it. Two, three, four, five. It's got five on it. It looks like it's more, but it's because there are all. All these other ribbon cables that are all oh, snaking up over here. Oh, I said it's a different ribbon cable. Yeah, so there's underneath this box, I can actually see from looking, there's a significantly larger plug 
that connects to some of these other ribbon cables. And then there's a ribbon cable plugged in here. And so they just, again, they just kind of were cleaning up the look of what they've got in here. Speaking of significantly larger ribbon cables, mm -hmm. or just cables in general, this strain relief is uh, might be an issue getting through there. Oh boy. Well, I mean, we don't need this. Well, the strain relief is good to have, but. Well, don't strain it then. Yeah, I'll beat it. That's Problem a solved. Solution. Yeah, there we yeah. go, yeah. Oh, what are you? You're a one, two, three, you're a six. I need a five. You're probably also a six, because you were glued into a... Yep. Oh, ruined. <laughs> Pardon my reach. Yep, no, all of these little things that I got are sixes, because I ripped them out of a Mad Cats. Yeah. <clears throat> Mad Cats, ruining, every, ruining things since beyond the grave. So they, um, they have a slightly different setup that requires six pins for the same data? No, honestly, I think it had to do with... Here we are. This thing. This is, uh... I don't know what fell. Probably this. Um, because there's not anything new inside here. Uh, it's probably not important. Yeah, whatever it is, it's not impor important. Um, no, it's actually... No, they did have fives. Um, I don't know what I did with those. Uh, because I'm, uh, Jay, yeah, uh, that's... Um, so this was part of the, there we go, this was part of the interior of the Mad Cat sticks that went with the Naomi kit from, you know, a couple of years ago on Desert Bus. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I just gutted that one to convert it for the Naomi and then had connectors so you could actually disconnect those from it rather than them sort of being this mass of wires where you needed, like, three people to carry the Naomi and then the sticks right. without like ripping the wires out of each other. Um, but uh, but yeah, they're the same type of connectors, which is part partly why I kept all of these cables. Um, but up here, the little connectors that they had, one of these is a five pin and one of them is a six pin. And so I don't know what I did with all the uh, five pin cables, but I kept the six pin cables because that was super useful. It is not super <laughs> useful, but that's where they came from. Um, well then. Yep. Indeed. Rest in peace, Mad Cats. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. Hey, look at that. I wonder if you'll fit. Excuse me, guys. You're in my way. Um, yeah, cheating. It works. Yep, every time. Yeah, I have no idea where that came from, but I'll take it. <laughs> you sure it's not, like, part of a different part that you're going to need at some point? I mean, probably. Ooh, hey. Oh, no, 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 I know. It came with some other thing that I'm not using that was completely not what I needed for this. A screw did there you, you are. Did you lose a thing, Ian? I, I lost a screwdriver for a moment. Okay. But yeah, we're going to make that ground cable nice and pretty by connecting it from the inside. It's coming from the inside. <laughs> well, we're going to try to at least. Just, if there's one thing we're all about here on Tinker Tailor, it's aesthetics. You know, sometimes we just want to do a project justice. Yeah, so Two no, these are rival schools. these these came from something completely different, but it'll work at least as far as the having uh having a disconnect on it that uh isn't completely bad shit. Um so yeah, so that's great. That's five cables and then we have the little ends that we can connect to something else. So good, yay. And then these other ones we'll just wire into, well, not all of them, but we'll wire them into the JAMA harness. Assuming I remember everything. Um, speaking of remember every, remembering everything, <laughs> let me not lose the screwdriver from this kit. I will just get it out of my way. And I need to bring up my wiring harness stuff now. All right. How's it going over make, there? We're making progress. This is pretty good. Going to look like a power supply. Are we on? Oh, we're good. Yeah, yeah. 
It's looking like a power supply. <laughs> well, it's going to look like a power well, supply that's, and that's, less like a hack job. <laughs> I mean, it kind of looked like a power supply where you started. So if it was right. looking less <laughs> like a power supply now, that would be Well, I mean, bad. it's, yeah, it's, bo it's both. It, it's a power supply and a hack job. But um, give me two things. Yeah, the it's keys. a good looking. It's a good looking hack job. Yeah, the key is making sure you can't tell it's a hack job from the outside. Well, on that front, uh... <laughs> at least this one part. Oh yeah, I don't. I don't know. You're in the way. Uh, would this be uh, an appropriate time for maybe a quick commercial break? I think we're just about there, actually. Uh, how about I just finish yeah, let's buttoning let this up. Yeah, wrap that up while I get to the bits of this wiring harness so that I actually need to Palpably close to buttoning this power supply up and saying goodnight to it. Oh, man. Like, why would you do this to me? There are a lot of cables, Zangwin 47. Yeah, so many cables. Again, at the end of it, we won't be using all of them, but... Ah, oh, there you are. Oh, right, on the other one, I kind of cut these away from each other so that I could make sense of it, even though they're segmented out. That's point... all, like, player controls and stuff right. over here. There's a certain point where color-coding the cables doesn't actually help too much. No, especially <laughs> if, like, you don't... They run yeah. out of colors. <laughs> yeah, too many colors. No, no, you need the brown <sighs> wire with the white stripe and the yellow stripe. Also, uh, thanks... Uh, thanks everybody for not uh, singing the Pocahontas song when we started talking about Colors of the Rainbow. Um, yeah. Okay, let's see. Well, the buttons are really what I want to go with there. Why are you shorter than the other ones? Why would you do that? <laughs> Who is responsible for this? I mean, me, I guess. Because I'm the one who bought this harness. I mean, you also can just make a harness for yourself, which is cleaner. Uh, it, it, it doesn't take up as much space, especially if you know, like, you're not going to use everything on it. You can just get the, the bit. Yeah, you just get the strip, and then you just put in the stuff that you need. Um, the one thing I don't like about this one uh, that annoys me immensely is that the uh, you know they they just left in the key entirely. Like oh. I get it, you, you know, but also how hard is it for you to uh, here, here we go. how hard is it to just break that key off so that you can look at it at a glance and be like, oh yeah, nothing's connected to that. That's clearly where the key slot goes. <laughs> um, but that's also you know I can't complain too much because it was really cheap. I mean. It was very affordable. <laughs> it was they, uh, less costly. Inexpensive. Yeah. Good word. Chat brings up that this does actually, you're, this is actually starting to look like uh, uh, keep talking and no one explodes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it's more uh, keep talking and nobody gets shocked, <laughs> but, uh, but it's very close. So yeah. in this instance, you guys feel are like building the <laughs> right. This is, yeah. This is if the you, prequel. To, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the secret. You get to learn how to, hey, they actually kind of go on okay. Today on Tinker Tailor's Solder Fry, you'll learn how to set up yourself the bomb. I'm out. <laughs> You're on your own, Ian. Yep. This is, uh, it's going to be a short episode. Right. All right. This looks like it can plug into something, so it will, and then all yeah. the smoke will come out, and no one will be happy. That's really, really, Ian. All the smoke will come. Thanks. That that makes me feel so much better. No smoke is coming out. I managed to avoid touching the bad parts of the power supply, so hey, good. That's... I mean, it also hasn't actually been active for probably two years I mean, there's a there's a big capacitor in there so i'm still not willing to take the risk but good man that yeah. was that was my um uh real quick before we go on break <clears throat> story time i probably told this before and i apologize yeah, go for it because i made a mistake here <laughs> <laughs> there's some lips here that's sinker that taylor <laughs> um so uh when i used to uh uh work in an arcade one of the things that i refused to do was work on monitors 
because uh, people wouldn't buy the expensive gear you needed to discharge all the capacitors in it, and monitors have a big old honker. Um, oh yeah. And uh, later they made some that would auto discharge when you would power them off. Thank you. Um, but uh, but there were uh, VHS tapes that a guy who, I can't remember his last name, but I believe his first name was Randy, uh, made to teach people how to, because he taught seminars on like how to service uh, arcade machines and stuff like that. And I had bought one that was how he, uh, how to service monitors. And the method that he had was to take a screwdriver and attach a, an alligator clip with a wire to the frame of the monitor. And then on the back of the monitor, the um, flyback, I believe, where the suction cup is on the back of a cathode ray tube, uh, you would slip the screwdriver under and, and touch it to, um, to one of the parts in it that the flywheel, uh, flyback was hooked to, which is where it would discharge the 10,000 volts or so. Uh, and so the idea was you would slip this through and then it would discharge to ground, make a huge pop, and then you would wait a couple minutes and do it again to make sure that it was all gone. And then you could reach in and unhook it and take the circuit board off from the monitor and do all the soldering work you needed to on it. Uh, to which I said, fuck that. <laughs> I like my heart to continue beating and it's not worth this. Um, so yeah, that is actually a thing that people would do and like, so don't get CRG yeah. repair advice from Randy, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I and another guy that I uh, that I knew uh, who also used to work in arcades was like had done that stuff, and he was like, "Yeah, I would like slip my hand in my pocket, you know, basically in the like try not to have any extremities that would ground, mm -hmm. and it's like and just pray, uh, and it's like mm, no." So no. like, if you're defusing a bomb, sure. If you're yeah. repairing an arcade cabinet, yeah. you don't want to take your life you into your hands. You could do that, or take it to someone who has the equipment to discharge it properly. Or if you're really, you really, really just need a monitor working, God, just buy another one. Just buy another one, arcade. It's not worth the life of an employee, and certainly not worth the. Well, in the states, I guess that would be workers' comp. I don't know mm -hmm. how that works yeah, up who, here. Who, who pays off? Yeah, I feel yeah. like Randy really opened himself to some liability there. <laughs> yeah, it seems like that that would not fly so much these days. Yes. But also, you know, I think the people who bought it or duplicated tapes, which I'm sure happened. Uh, were people who went to arcade auctions uh, like me. Randy's VHS tapes for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh. had a, a teacher in, a tech, you know, a computer teacher in high school that got, not, he, he got, like, knocked over, not, not seriously harmed, but mm. knocked down by a, a CRT that had been unplugged for, like, three months. <laughs> no. Three or six nope. months or something, yeah. like way, way longer than you would think would be an issue. But yeah, but it's that's why you don't you don't take risks. I mean, the one that I remember that needed repairing, and like I got the parts, and then I was just like, someone else gets to figure this out because I'm not I'm not doing this. You need somebody to actually service this. Uh, I'm not willing to risk my life. Was uh, sit down. Star Wars uh, vector graphics. Ooh, that's yeah. a nice. Well, and those Wells holy Gardner. Sh holy shit! Sorry. Hey, it's <laughs> hey, it's Randy Fromm. Oh my god! Oh my god! He's still around. Uh, hopefully he's he doesn't... not dead from electrocution. Whoa, whoa, whoa! wait, Free? Wait, wait, wait. Was it free three DVD set on CRT DVD monitor, monitor repair. repair? Not covered during this class. Oh. oh. Yeah, that's Randy Fromm. I mean, honestly, he had a lot of really rocking advice for ar arcade repair. Um, he was good at it. Looks like a uh, good course. Yeah, but the, uh, yeah, those um, free DVDs on how to repair monitors. Yeah, hopefully he has a better solution for discharging the monitor now. Mm -hmm. I hope. I hope so, Randy. But, man, I'm glad he's still doing it. 2017? He, he, Rock he's on. probably still discharging monitors and hasn't... Uh... And it's still alive. Yeah. Clearly, so... It's a good sign. Rock on, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is a good time for us to take a quick break. We're going to throw to some commercials and we'll be back with more uh, arcade fun after this. Stick around.
Hey, yeah. welcome back to Nicker Taylor Solder Fry, where we are putting together a Naomi 2 for home usage with occasional Ben. Yep. With a little, with extra Ben mm -hmm. today. Bonus Ben. Big, big, big helps from... <laughs> Bonus Ben, sure. Yeah. Let's go with that. Um, well, you've uh, rewired the power supply, mm -hmm. so um, let's see if we can manage to uh, not fry ourselves. Ooh, that sounds like a that good seems idea. Good. Well, first, I need to put this chip somewhere let's, safe. I'll, I'll put, put that, that next to the Gundam. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, uh, Johnny, yeah, you take somewhere. care of that. And Wait, I'm going to keep there's all nowhere this safer than beside the gun. wiring over here. There used to be a checkpoint mug full of broken and wiring and I'm going to hand that to you. Yep. Um, all right. right, and then Graham went to like drink out of it and was like, Whoa, hey, what's all this stuff in this mug? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be like, mug. what? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so we've got them. Well, monitor. It's a television, isn't it's, it? It's this television is worth more to us than a lot of things just because of how many legacy connectors it has on the back of it. Oh, yeah. Like anytime we need to test a component, component yeah. or VGA. I saw, yeah, yeah. That's, that's some good stuff right there. Nice. I don't super want to connect this right now. Um, I don't know that I, I'm sure we'll just get an error sign from it. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is I want to plug this in to the board. Sorry, it's on the back side of it. I, um, I always... So, the, this yeah, monitor, the, I always yeah. think, is a great example of. It's like there are so many, um, so many situations with this with stuff where it's like you know you have to know, especially with video Stereo. equipment, where you have to know like okay, what is the what is the exact frame rate and resolution of the input signal? Mm. What do you have? In, and if it doesn't work, it like all messes up and all this stuff. And it's yeah. like this crappy Samsung monitor that was like a hundred bucks. A long time ago, and is you know just the the cheapest thing we can get at the time. Mm -hmm. Right? Does it? No problem. Yeah. Auto detects the signal. Bang. No problem. Why can't other things that are professional level pieces of equipment yeah. do that? This this is like the modern day <laughs> equivalent of that old Commodore modern uh, mo monitor that everyone had. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the yellow oh. in, uh, comp components and or composite, and then the single white jack for audio. Oh, no, guys. No, no, no. I wanted the actual... That's it. There. <laughs> Several people in the chat say they have the same TV. It's oh. already set. It's a, That's real good. Okay, cool. Uh, I just... There are dip switches on this. I'm sorry they're this way. Uh, I'll show them in a minute. We can. But yeah, or if you want to use that. Um, Let's bring the webcam in here. Um, well, these... There we go. Here we'll see when... Do, 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 do. This... Yeah. Me, uh, Hi, Ben. Yeah, it's kind of a... Oh, I guess I can get a little... There yeah. we go. So those dip switches, this first dip switch will switch it between a 15 kilohertz uh, to a 31. Mm -hmm. And 31 is readable by most computer monitors that take VGA inputs, and 15 is not. 15 is is signal for uh, arcade monitors. That's normally like they're running on a different resolution mm -hmm. and all this other fun stuff. Um, I, okay, we can... I I love that the the label on the dip switch section is dip switch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's what they are. They're the only set of dip switches on the Naomi, so... But couldn't it be labeled like monitor configuration or something? Yeah, the well, <laughs> but it's only the one. Only one of them is for... Oh, the I see. And it's I the see. first one, um, and it's already set properly, so... Do you have any idea what the uh, USB port is on there for? The USB is, yeah, the USB is actually runs to the converter uh, so that it goes to JAMA. USB is actually where you get your, um, sorry, um, it's the beer. It's a good beer. Um, the USB has all the control controller information in it. Um, so like on the Sega, on the Sega version of an I.O., it would go into that, and then the breakout would push that out where you would have, like, uh, I think the, um, like, all the stuff that would run into a custom Naomi cabinet. Because, again, their wiring system was not JAMA exactly. It had all this other stuff that would just direct connect to the board. They were very, yeah. Is this on, or how uh, do I? Yeah, uh, right, right in the middle. Oh, it's one of those, like, touch it and it turns on? It's the worst yeah, for controls. Uh, yeah. It might actually be better... 
That's yeah. monstrous. I just grabbed the... Um... Uh, far left dot <laughs> with the switch. There Touch we go. Touch sensitive. It's, PC. There we go. That's our boy. All right. Um, Crossing our fingers. Let's do it. Okay. No, it hates the video output. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it hates the video output. Um, it's not doing the. It's not saying it has no signal. Yeah, it just can't interpret what it's getting from the Naomi so much. Um, oh, oh there it hey. here we are. Maybe the, yeah, it just needed time to boot. Ah, oh, not the mm. fastest startup time, but that's okay. No, yeah. error thirty four. Yeah. Gateway cannot be found. Well, yeah. that's because they went out of business several years ago. <laughs> Error 34. Gateway is out of business. Yeah, well, gate, Gateway cannot be found. That's a, specifically about the network yeah. port, and that's the network stuff, which is fine, but... So, let's see. Uh, is it you or you? There we are. Test mode. Yeah. We'll be doing this a lot. Um... Boy, you make a lot of noise. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I actually just turned off the uh, the gate on the compressor because it, 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 it was going like, like in and out, in and out. Yeah. And out. Yeah, it is not the. Uh, I guess yeah. yeah, in a in an arcade thing, it's like in a cabinet, and there's lots of other sound going on. Yeah. So. Yeah. You well, and also arcades are generally pretty noisy because everybody's on attract mode, and you know. Yeah. Mm. So unknown title. Well, there's not. A game loaded in it, um, or a chip in your security section. So, but yeah. So the nice thing is, is you can use these switches to kind of cycle through this. And I'm just gonna test the RAM. Uh, it's good. Good. At least that one is good. Well, one chip is good. Mm -hmm. Oh, so those are probably just actually individually uh, mm -hmm. numbered RAM chips. Mm -hmm. So if one were to go down, and you say. Mm -hmm had the skill to replace it. Right. <clears throat> I probably shouldn't have done the RAM check. <laughs> it tested that one went really real quick. The rest of them seem to be... Well, it's also though like we kind of don't know. I don't remember this process and usually if I'd hit a RAM test on a system, I'm going to wander off. Yeah. I'm not going to sit with it. I kind of want this to be like good, okay, eh, right, eh, pretty good, yeah. spicy, fine. I mean, the other thing here is, is like I don't know which chip is IC thirty five. If that's actually just the main board, or if it also wants to test on. There oh, it goes. Well, uh, something else is good. Just I don't want to spend the rest of the time doing this. This was a mistake. <sighs> Going off the um, provenance, too, of, of how old this is, the RAM is probably not that fast. Right. I'm sure it's not. Um, Ian, would you do me the honors of a uh, terrible thing and disconnecting it? Sure, right in the middle of a RAM test. I mean... It'll be fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's suffered worse. <laughs> Hopefully we won't have to now yeah. test the RAM because we turned it off in the middle of the test. No, 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 no. We won't have to. Oh, hey, there are the optical. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where the plugs are. Um, cool. Good to know. So uh, it boots, uh, which is cool. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do another... F uh, oh, no, I haven't plugged in the SCSI. Let's do that. Okay. While I stand on the cable behind me because I'm... Good at that. So the SCSI is connecting the GD-ROM to the... Yes, the SCSI, uh, so what I'll do is I'll, oh, so this locks because there's a screw here. Um, so normally a screw would be here and that would keep you from opening this up uh, while the game oh, was wow. in or anything else like that. There's a lot of security stuff in arcades, you know, not security like to keep anyone from, you know, anyone with a screwdriver from doing it, but just to sort of keep everything together because it would often be mounted sideways or... It's a little dusty in there, but... It is. <laughs> oh, sorry, just keep that uh, off there. That is mm -hmm. the... Girute... Uh -huh. Ah, yes. Yep. Yeah, double X. Girute Gear. 
Oh, thank you. You're welcome. God, it's oh. so inflexible. 50. I hate it. And, th and that was the modern version of SCSI, too. Yeah. yeah. This I, was... I used to go to... Uh, SCSI Prime. No, not really. I used to go to LAN parties where people would... Oh, there was one guy who threatened to beat you with a 50-pin One guy. SCSI. Was that yeah. guy you, Ian? No, oddly <laughs> enough. Yeah. I feel like that guy was you. No, I... I th these were the days back when I was the young... 14 year old junior high school student. Oh, okay. And these were the kids who actually ran the local uh, Macintosh mm. users group. Right, so that so was, so that's your Yakuza Zero story. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, well, it's plugged in and I put this in. I haven't put in the security chip. Let's see if it yells at yeah. us. Um, hey, this is where that uh, switch would have come in handy. Ooga. Yeah, that switch <laughs> would have been real handy here, Ian. <laughs> Funny about that. Bleat and borp. Luckily, it can't phone, you know, it can't be like, oh no, phoning Sega, or... No, 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 the security chip thing, all it would do is be like, well, you can't load this because you don't have the chip for this game. Oh. Pretty simple. Releasing yeah. poisonous gas. Yeah, release the Kraken. Now, thankfully, these chips do not rely on any sort of uh, constant power supply, do they? No. Yeah. Naomi was not made by Capcom. Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, Street Fighter Two was uh, built on the CPS-1 system, and Street Fighter II was so popular, it was... It was um, pirated like mad. Um, oh, so, oh, sure, we're getting the gateway. Fine, whatever. Back to there. Uh, we'll just go back to test mode. Um, and, uh, and so, for the CPS-2 system, they developed... Uh, encrypted, like basically they encrypted the uh, ROMs and then they included volatile RAM attached to a lithium ion battery that they injected code into live from the factory and then uh, basically it wouldn't use the lithium ion battery while it was plugged into power so in most arcades it was fine and you didn't have to deal with it for like the better part of a decade mm -hmm. and then you could send it in and there was a service fee and they'd replace it but basically if you tried to decode the, you know, the ROM or do anything to it, like it was, it was referred to as the CPS2 suicide because uh, eventually it would die. Mm -hmm. And once that lithium ion battery lost power, you're just done. Yeah, you had no decryption codes, yeah. and so people who got them, you know, secondhand would actually solder another battery to the connectors live live so because that they could never it can never yeah it needs power all the time and then that, replace the lithium ion battery it literally then, is like a bomb diffusal mechanism yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and then the in the CPS3 it was like a double encryption system and they cuz it was it would load off of a CD ROM into the system and then there was a cartridge that had a lithium ion battery and all the security stuff in it. Mm -hmm. And again, it was like a double encryption layer instead of the like single that they use in the CPS2. Yeah. Capcom was very serious about this because they didn't want another Street Fighter 2 situation. Yeah, they didn't want to see like Street Fighter 3 Rainbow Edition. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, Street Fighter 2 Rainbow Edition. A lot of fun. Terribly broken, totally unbalanced. <laughs> so that's saying unknown title still. That's just because yeah. you can't read it at all? Yeah, it's not... Again, I don't have, like, the key chip in or anything like that. So that's what's going on here mm -hmm. is... Right now, what we should do with that, if we wanted to load something on it, would be connect it to laptop. my laptop with a crossover cable and then set the IP address and change the IP address here in... Oh, that there. whole, uh, and so then it would be like, yeah. oh, I found a gateway. Yeah. Well, it, it would still say gateway not found, but it'd be on the connection, and then I could use an app on the computer to, to load Start a ROM loading. directly into it. Oh, okay. So, you, so yeah. you, have a, uh, you have sort of a thing that will pretend to be the gateway that it's expecting. Uh, well, there's some software. Yeah, there's software that will let you kind of load on as if it was a GD ROM. But again, I also, we have the chip that we have to put in the IC, and then I think it will stop telling us that. Hmm. Um, Sound test? No, we're good. No, I don't need a CRT test. System assignments. Two players. Advertise sound. Yes. 100%. <gasps> yeah. Oh, the vertical monitors. Yeah, well, Ikaruga was a Naomi game, so of course you needed vertical mm -hmm. monitors. What was the game, uh, uh, the, the 
like X Men game. There was two monitors. Oh, side it was just X Men. Yeah. So there was a normal version, which was in a standard cabinet, and then they'd have multiple. But the six player version, where right. each coin slot was unique to, had a had two monitors that were attached to the same like main board as far as like the monitor circuit boards that would normally be attached. And so it was another thing that was tremendously difficult to like serve it. Like it was just like you had a fail point uh, for both, like all in one place, mm -hmm. which is like, no, don't, don't do that. That's a terrible design. A really good way and, to make yeah. people angry. And, and it was one, enormous. It was one like, of the other, one of the monitors was always like green. Yes. <laughs> one of them was always jacked up. And, <laughs> and the reason and they is couldn't, because... And they couldn't replace it because it was so hard to fix. Yeah, it was mm. just that thing of like you had to fiddle with both. And yeah, it was terrible. Service type. But common type. versus individual. That's for your, that's your coin slots. So if you set it to individual, then the player, player one, one point player slot two. is only for player one, right. and oh, player two is okay. only for player two. So you probably want individual for a fighting game. How do you maybe? turn on free no, play? No, I leave them on common. Oh. Because it doesn't matter on most games. How do you what? How do you turn on free play? Oh, uh... That was, al that was always like the, like there was, you know, like the rumors yeah. around where it's like, okay, if you hit like all these buttons in this particular sequence, you'll get free games. Yeah, I mean, mostly, like, Good what I remember, God. yeah, they have a lot of different versions of, like, here's what these all do. Five coins, one credit. I have Man. played games that do that. Mm -hmm. Bull honky. Oh, there you go. That's <laughs> what you want. Hack sword. Yep. <laughs> Sequence setting. Oh, all kinds of fun stuff. Now we can yeah. play it for free. Like Bookkeeping, any which is, other so you can see, yeah. Oh, wow. Total time. It doesn't remember anything because I'm sure I have to pop it off and put in a, a 2032 battery into it. <laughs> um, the, the battery but the is. nice thing is, is this is a test board for your coin slots. Ooh. Yeah. Backup data clear. No, we're good. Let's test the dim board. I mean, this was a mistake. One percent. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody, I'm just going to drink this beer while this goes mm. on. No. I'm, seriously, I don't think we're going to sit through this whole thing. No. But it's, yeah, program version 4.02. Which is important. Mm -hmm. It seems uh, pretty high. It's gone through a couple versions. Yeah. No, it has. Um, but... Uh, As a platform, it was around for a decent amount of time. Yeah, I mean, it kind of outlasted the Dreamcast. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, because what they did is, do you remember F355 Ferrari? Yes. So that's a Naomi game, um, but that's a Naomi game that used three Naomi boards, and they were daisy-chained. <laughs> yeah. All they were doing was the, 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 the boards that were, um, that, that were connected to the prime board were serving you the two side monitors because it was three monitors for like that wraparound experience. So two of them just did all the graphics push for the monitors and then the main one handled the main one and kind of all the controls and, and everything. That's where you'd use the, uh, the fiber optic right. networking. That's where you'd use that networking link stuff. Keep them in sync. Wow. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. And so, but that wasn't the only one. They also had some uh, kind of flight sim games. They had one that was like a fighter jet sort of thing and then the other one which was actually a lot of fun where you would like take off and land a jumbo jet oh, yeah. I, I can't remember what it was called <laughs> i just remember that it was uh, a lot of fun it's something I, that's actually got eight percent that's not bad that's something um, that got uh brought home actually with the xbox if i recall that's the which the, the the system link oh. for single player something that uh, you halo yeah. used that and uh what was that was other? That was good. I mean, that's why a lot of people, I think, were like, yo, Halo, Halo yeah. is the thing, is because that was the first point where if you had a console and a TV, you could basically have a LAN party. And, uh, Forza yeah. and uh, Steel Battalion also. You could link up three X, you had to buy three copies of Forza, three, mm. co three Xboxes, yeah. and then you could have that wraparound experience at home. Yeah, Steel Battalion, man. Mm -hmm. There's also, yeah. I mean, there's also the, um, I mean, not wraparound, but there's like the sort of GameCube style. There you go, everything's good. Hey. Yep, good. Life Unknown good. title. No, oh, can't test that. Well, we can't because it's not really a, yeah. So that's just because you don't have to... Yeah, have to. I think if I just pop that chip in, we'd be good. Japan version. Of course it's the Japan <laughs> version. 
So now it's just going to be like, well, there's nothing here. So uh, go ahead and unplug okay. it. Okay. I believe there was, uh, there, yeah, there's GameCube. I mean, there was the, there wasn't, the, not necessarily the like widescreen stuff, but GameCube did all the sort of interesting stuff with the like combining it with um, the uh, uh, the Game Boy Advances and stuff, like the sort of second, trying oh, to get yeah, the second yeah, yeah. screen stuff going. Yeah, yeah, which was really neat if you knew if other you people who had advances yeah, yeah. and you bought four of those cables to, yeah, it was, um, there was a Final Fantasy game. Was it's it Crystal? Crystal Chronicles. That's it. One of them you had to hold the bucket the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> which I, I've heard actually is kind of incredible it's if you can get four people to play it. actually a lot of fun to yeah. do that. But also, like, the barrier to entry for that was ridiculous. Somehow it seems like it'll be a lot easier to say... I did it again. Do it in the... Uh, do it online. Yeah. Yeah, that seems way easier. Oh, hey, nifty. Huh? Oh, is that the chip for it? Probably for the, well, probably oh. for this game. This was attached to this, so I assume this is the chip no. That's the net for net booting. Yeah, that's the net boot chip. So, I'd so that's assume important. that's the game. What chip. happens if we plug this in? Shall we find out? Let's Wait, find a, out. It's a different chip for every game. Yeah, every game would normally have it in like a kind of plug, but in this case, they I think just ripped it out of that because they thought this was better. I don't know why. Oh, they, I don't know which direction this goes. Oh, uh. you know what? We're gonna find out, and I'm gonna make a mistake. Oh, what? That's no, that's exciting. I mean, isn't that what this show is about? Yep. Now, if I were to take a guess, mm -hmm. I would guess most of these chips have a divot on one of the sides. Well, they should, <laughs> and they do. My guess is the divot lines up with this cutout here and on the. I agree with you because that's where the divot is on that. Is there a divot on the? other chip that you have. The other chip... God, why am I handling this? Has a very small divot, yes. Yeah. So, I think you're right. You know what? Why don't we just put that one in, instead of putting this in to see? Because I imagine... Well, if that works for net boot, I think it should... I don't know. So is the we idea can pop is, it out. Is this other one is like a universal one that'll work for everything? Yeah. That's the idea, but I don't know if that's just strictly for net boot or if it also works from a CD. But we're about Let's to find, find it. out. Oh, you know what? That pin's bent. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, um, fixed. <laughs> I got it. I hate this. I used to do Dreamcast mods, and the first ones were like 20 wires. <laughs> And I hated it. And then, and then the second revision of them was down to four wires. I remember you telling me that you had to stop watching at a certain point when I was doing the soldering. Yeah, it really, it really hurt. It brought back too many memories. Well, it was just, it just, it was so, it's so delicate. Um, I forgot where I put my I fix it stuff. Oh, uh, right here. Of course, right in front of all of us. Got there. Um, yeah, it just, uh, it was really difficult to watch. Um, not because you were doing anything wrong, but just, it just, I mean, yeah. Because it's a Dreamcast. It's a reminder of... Yeah. And it was like, ah, uh, having flashbacks. There we go. Ooh, I think we're gonna need to get the SCSI off there as well. Uh, you're right. Thank you. You're welcome. There we are. <laughs> Tight screws. Yeah. What does it say on the top? Something. It says uh, 1015 oh, 2014. 2014. Which I assume is the either the date that that firmware was released or if it was flashed. Well, come on, guy. Yeah. I'm sure when it was flashed. Oh, no. Oh, come on. Well, I'm not doing that. Well, that's great. I just really made this more difficult because there's this metal piece in here that like... Oh, did it fall in? Yep. Oh, oh. First thing it did was like, bloop! Cool. I have forceps. Ah, uh, well, yep. Yeah. What happened? Oh, uh, it's just there's a little like metal thing in here that this part was screwed to and as soon as I unscrewed it, it just fell down. Do you think you could reach it with these No, guys? see, this one's not on. Um, 
Is this here? I'm just going to unplug this while I hear that slide around and try not to think too much about <laughs> it. So Ooh. Yeah, I mean, it's in well, apart from the hell is that? Ooh, Ian? that's some interesting schmutz. Yeah, do you have something that is not magnetized that I can Yeah, give me a Oh, actually any one of these scrapers if you don't like. Oh, so many choices. Whichever one seems safest. None of them do. <laughs> oh, that's just... I don't know, man. Is that like flux or... You know what? I don't want Yeah, to. I wouldn't... I'm not going to fool with it. <laughs> all right. It's just these two, because these are all... So, whatever. So the, the screws on the SCSI port are actually holding that cowling in place yep. as well. Yeah, I think so. And then the other ones are over there. Yeah, yeah. So maybe while you're unscrewing that, I'm going to tip this up so that the people at home can get a look oh, yeah. at the inside of the... And here is the battery you were referring to. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that's long since dead. But a lot easier to, to replace uh -huh. on this, it looks like, than it was on the Dreamcast. Oh. Is that dead battery being dead going to cause any problems for Where us? Where did you go, buddy? No. No, it's just a memory thing. Mm. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, Ian, where are your forceps? They are right here. Guys, why would you do this? Oh no. Oh, that is a fairly significant metal part. Mm -hmm. It's fallen to the depths of the... Well, it like fell sideways because, you know, I popped it out and it just... Uh, you know what? We don't need... I don't actually what know what is that were, for. I think it was just another brace for this it's metal for frame, which is in. like to keep all of this protected. Because in an arcade cabinet, especially in a lot of arcades, again, Japanese arcades, a lot of smoke, a lot of other horrible things you don't want just settling Exposed. on it. Yeah. You know, you don't want people pouring your beer on. <laughs> yeah. So this was the Guilty Year one. Correct. And this is. This is our spurious, unlabeled, suspicious chip. <laughs> Code from parts unknown. Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. Everything's fine. God, that's the worst. It's so fiddly. So, so we're not risking any sort of uh, data sharing worm or... Um from this code? Well, I mean, it's really not anything that, you know, we can fix, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is Goosefer 2.0's work. No, um, sorry. It's, uh, ooh, ooh. hey, ooh, I don't like that. The board kind of goes down when I, e yeah. Worrisome. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ian. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hand that to you. Okay. And let's clear some space between us. Yeah. I'll put this back over here. And here's what I'm going to do. Because this kind of wobbles. Bendy. So it's not really supported by anything. And maybe that's not it. Because, see, when you look at this, where this would hold it up was against that. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's the that holds everything in place. Well, it's yeah. So we'll have to we'll have to do that. Back. But in the meantime, let me just hold this up for you. All right. And we'll just very carefully. Yeah, I'm gonna let you do that. 
Except that one was slightly bent. If you want to, I feel like we can straighten that a bit. You do it. <laughs> I'm I'm going to trust you to handle that because I don't trust my uh, hand-eye coordination right now. Perfect. Mostly because you are still doing soldering work on a regular basis, and I am not. <laughs> That seems like it's a little bit wide for the... Mm, yeah, oh, well, it does, doesn't it? That feels... Yeah, we're in there on no, all it sides. It looks like you can't... Yeah. Oh, jeez. I know, I hate it. That's in there. All right. I don't think it's in any more than that. Nope, that's good. All right. <laughs> Let's put this thing back together. This ain't one of these zero inf insertion force no. type sockets, eh? <laughs> oh, I wish. Um, yeah, I mean that's the thing is, is this is also the net boot. Like, there's a lot, there's a lot at play here as far as uh, the last time I was inserting some a chip of that style into a socket like that, I was playing with an Apple II. Mm. Oh. Mm-hmm. That's fun. You know what might be the easiest thing to do there? Hmm. Uh, if we had some. Mac, some of the tacky stuff, or oh, well, some... I mean, it's got to slip under the circuit board, mm -hmm. you know, before I slip this in and put this down, which is just like, what, why would you do this, guys? Why would you do this? Because that's it'll wiggle out like this. Right, because this one wasn't there, so. <laughs> just engage the threads just enough to hold it on. Yep, that's that's basically it. Whew. Yep, I think that's the way, I think that's actually the way to do this. Okay, so Kyoto asks for, so for someone who knows almost nothing about how hardware works, what is the actual goal here? Like, what is wrong with the machine? Oh, well, there's nothing wrong yeah. with it. We just have to put a security chip in. Um, so that we can load games onto it. Mm -hmm. So somebody who had actually, like, if this was And also they would normally not be bare like this. They would mm. be in a little kind of plastic thing that makes it easy for you to just go... Bang it in. And then that would stick out of the, out of the case here through this and little metal slot. And then when you needed to change it out, you could just pop it back out by hand. We're doing this because the chips we received do not have that <laughs> super helpful thing. Um, because why, why would they? So that would make this easy, and that's not what Tinker Tailor is about. Our client asks as well, what makes an arcade cabinet monitor different from a standard PC monitor? Um, there's, well, a couple of things. One is they mostly were a, they had a lower refresh rate slash lower resolution. Um, and two, they had absolutely no shielding whatsoever. Um, so in fact, if you ordered one, uh, like, say, from HAP Controls, because you needed a monitor for your machine, and it arrived, and you happened to not live right next door to their warehouse, because they were unshielded uh, as they would travel, uh, the, uh, the cathode ray tube, the image would get pulled by the magnetic field of the Earth. And so the way that you... Uh, would fix that was you need to buy you needed to buy a degaussing coil oh. And so a degaussing coil when you got it because I had to do this on uh, the the uh, machine that had uh, Capcom versus S uh, no Marvel versus Capcom 2 in it um, I bought a degaussing coil uh, Once I learned oh, this is what I'm supposed to do and read the instructions but basically it arrives and it is this sort of black circle that is kind of flat and metal, and then there's a bump here, and there's a cable that comes out of it, and a switch. And when you press that switch down, it's active, and it kind of makes a little bit of a low hum mm -hmm. noise, because it's a degaussing coil. But what you are supposed to do is stand 10 feet away from your monitor, with it parallel to the surface of the monitor, and then move towards it slowly while rotating it in like circular motions all the way up to it 
and then back while the monitor is off, and then and then you release the button and turn off the degaussing coil, and then plug the monitor in, and that should fix all of the magnetic problems. That sounds a lot like how you're supposed to approach a cougar. I mean, <laughs> it's definitely a thing where I did it, and I was like, I'm performing some kind of ritual. Yeah, I got cast, suckered out of my money, and then I a magic spell. Yeah, and then I turned it on, and it worked. And it's just because it's all magnetic fields and it's not stuff you can see. But uh, it's a really, it makes you feel really dumb when you do it. Um, but, but it works. Uh, further question that mm -hmm. I think might be interesting to, to talk about is what's wrong with just gluing some sort of uh, handy handle onto the top of the chip? Um, Other uh, than... You tell me, Ian. Possibly delaminating the chip. It's right. the first time that you tr attempt to yank it out. That part seems bad. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know, because I... I've never had a GD-ROM uh, add-on for a Naomi system. I've only ever had the cartridge stuff um, because they were also expensive systems when they were in arcades. And, you know, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was all I was really willing to buy new. Um, but, uh, but so I've never seen those chips up close, so I don't know how they kind of had the IC chip mounted in that little thing. But, I mean, in theory, I guess you could do it as long as you mm -hmm. maybe strapped across the bottom of it. Yeah, maybe just a piece of ribbon under there, yeah. maybe. I honestly think it might not... But... It might... I don't think we're going to do this a whole lot. If you have an IC chip puller... That was what I was going to think th of. That will just... That would be just fine for yeah, this. But if um, we're not swapping it out, that's right. A moot but point. if this, yeah, if this is the, I stepped on the cable again. Um, if this is all we're doing with it, and we never have to change this out, then mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. And uh, Anarian also linked to you. Can, you can get uh, little uh, Ziff socket adapters for these things oh. too. Oh, that's nice. That's much better. I might actually just bookmark that right now. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it has a tiny little lever. It's adorable. Aww. And it's $3. Oh, that's, that's brilliant. Uh, sold. Right. Done. Because it's a standard socket. Okay. Well, now that that's in, let's plug this back in. Yeah. Thanks, Anarian. That's actually something I never thought would have existed. That's really good. Yeah. It makes sense, though. Yep. So so our hope is that that chip is sort of like a universal... And will allow, like, a boot from the GD-ROM that we have in here. Right. In addition to the NetBIOS boot. If it doesn't, it's fine. We can yep. do the NetBIOS boot. Um, in future. Right. Yeah, just knowing that we have to wait makes everything feel a little bit better, but I'm still... Mm -hmm. Still expecting that immediate. The image is yeah. the image is definitely being stretched too, of course. But. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that might be the TV. Yeah, you can probably well, set the TV to four oh, three and it'll be fine. Right, yeah. Okay. It is a little like booting up now. Well, thing would be handy. It is a little bit longer, but I think that might be due to the fact. If I remember the way that the Nomi works, it's actually loading the game off of the, the GDROM. Yeah, it's supposed to do that first. Into RAM. But we'll see. Usually, I, I mean, again, I've never owned a GDROM, so I don't know mm. if that's what's going on here, or if it's just like, well, this chip is Garbo. Yeah. You guys ruined everything. Um, is the city spinning? Let's... It's kind of hard to tell. There are a lot of fans at work. Yeah, I, I heard some of the telltale squick squick noises. Of so the... that's a sign, I guess. Yeah. But yeah. At this point, hurry up and wait. Uh, I guess while we're waiting to see uh, if this thing decides to actually boot <laughs> up, uh, does anybody have any questions? Mm hmm. I mean, we also could try, could have tried this without the disc in there first. That's also something that would have worked. Yeah. Oh, did you already get the other IC chip? And yeah, put I it put it in the, back okay. in the... Cool. It's amazing that it's actually exactly the right height for a chip. Hey, you know why it's not working? I, unplayed, I unplugged the VGA. <laughs> That's why it's not working, because I thought we were moving on to something else, and then, and then we didn't. Whoop. I'll just... Uh, 
Sure. Hey, there we go. That would have been very impressive if it uh, if it had worked. Yeah, if it had actually loaded the thing up. But again, I think it's just a, it's set to. Oh, uh, that's the other thing. Under this, I forgot there are dip switches to say don't boot off of the network, boot, boot off of this. the GD ROM. My mistake. Again, this is the first one I've ever worked with. Um, Shut it down. But yeah, that was that was my mistake. Um, let me see real quick if I can find that. Um, <laughs> yeah, trial and erroring a bunch of dip switches is less fun. Right. <laughs> I mean, yes, I did. <laughs> Ironically, Enron uh, called the VGA plugin <laughs> issue. Yeah, no, that was good. Well, I mean, because I unplugged it on stream, so. Yeah. You can just roll it back. Oh, high score saver. That's cute. <laughs> no. Why? Uh, it will have to play all You know day. what? I mean, if it's set up for the It's set up thing. for what we want it to do, so I'm not going to worry about okay. it. Um, what I am going to do is worry about some of our input. So let's focus on that. Input. Let me turn this off. Yep. I'll move this stuff over here. Will that, um, is that something that would show up on those tests, that test screen? Which? The, the input? input? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's the idea, is, is if we at least get some of the stuff connected to, uh, to that stick that I started pulling stuff out of, then we'll be in pretty good shape. I don't think we need to no. And then, and then I guess you could have like this, the, some button on the stick to add a coin to the thing that you use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on the, on, normally on this, there's a start and there's a back button. And instead of, instead of that, I think what we will wind up doing is just having the coin slot button next to the start. I mean, it's also on free play, so it doesn't matter that much. <laughs> but it's good to test. Okay. Um, look at all these cables. <laughs> all right. We're only going to do one of these right now because I... Sorry, Ian, but no. I think you're going to wind up having to go back and revisit all of this. That's quite all right, I think, um, Al. Let me give you the JAMA harness. Sounds good. And let me turn this so that you can also see it and that Ben's got a clean shot of it. Yeah. All right. So there we are. Now we can actually see the interior a little. First thing I want to do is go through on all of these and plug in the... Um, we're not going to deal with the joystick right this moment. I think uh, we can start figuring that out a little later. First thing I want to do is connect all of my ground wires, all of these guys that are daisy chained together, because they're all grounds and everything ground. needs a ground, to a bunch of these uh, buttons. Now, you were saying that they don't actually mark which is which. Yeah, and I can't remember if that's just because it doesn't matter for Sanwa stuff, or, you know, or if I'm just going to find out by trial and error whether or not I'm technically <laughs> mashing all these buttons at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the thing is so, so you'll you'll plug this all in and it'll be like, how are you hitting all the buttons at once? Right, and then when I go to like the test, it'll just be like button is being pressed, uh, just like that. Um, so <laughs> one of the things that is not ideal about a JAMA harness that is meant for an actual arcade, um, and I'm I guess I'm just going to wire up all six of these and connect things to it, so that we can yeah, track what's what. Um, is that all of these connectors that are all strung together are because the control panel is normally right next to each other. So you have, you know, you can clearly get to every button with it. But when we have separated out player one and player two, you kind of have to break this stuff, stuff up a little more. So, do, 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 do. And let's just. Uh, so these would all go to a player two? Can you, right. right. Well, they would go to player two, and then they would also go to the start buttons as well. And so for right now, we'll just connect all of those. And the other thing I'm curious to see is whether or not we even need to 
deal with power on the um, on the JAMA adapter because uh, on the other one I think I wired in power to it um, from this thing, but I don't know that we even have to. Uh, we're going to find out. All right. So and the controller itself doesn't actually need power. Yeah, I'm not sure that it does. I, again, I could be horribly mistaken, um, but we will know soon. Uh, so let's see. I feel like the ones that are right next to this are the ones I should start with, right? That, that seems reasonable. That tracks. Oh, they're different lengths. You're all <laughs> monsters. Is there uh, some sort of key which is which, or is it just in the... Uh, I mean, there might have been from the person that I bought this from, but I don't have that paperwork. Um, I mean, there is a key on the actual harness, but it's like I also have to go through all of these, like, you know, colors are reused in some yeah, places. Right, I mean, they try right. not to do, but like at the same time, that's why they bundled up stuff and reused red, because like they use red in the power. Um, Oof. I know, yeah, it's it's not my favorite. This is kind of the tedious, like, trial and error part with this harness, which is why it's kind of better if you just get a strip, you know, a key of your own, and just sort of build your own harness. Because then you know what color those wires are, and you can do everything once to the length that you want it. No, nope. they need to get onto the, like, uh, Ethernet stripey cable system. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, and some, you know, some people do that. Again, I like to kind of try to do better than that, um, but... That seems pretty tight. Yeah, yeah, they're surprisingly... Oh, oh kind of pushing that out. Surprisingly better or smaller <laughs> than I expected. There it is. Chat really wants the color of the cable and the button color to match. I don't think that's going to happen. No, I'm sorry, chat. That's just not, that's not in the cards on this stream. I'm sorry. Because really, like, we've got the worst thing going on, which is, like, the VGA connection there. Um, since it's doing the oh, gateway, we know that, like, the NetBIOS part is fine because that's what it should be doing right now. Yeah. Um, I need to go into those settings and manually set the IP. We probably should also switch out that uh, CR2032. Was it a 2032? I couldn't tell from okay. the... Yeah, I just I assume, because I, I think that's actually what it is from the times that I've looked at diagrams. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but yeah, right now it's just the like confirming that our input works. And if it doesn't, then that means we get to wire up a different power supply um, for the JAMA harness, Hooray. which is... Dumb, but I remember we might have that to do it. for the last one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, it was a mess, and I'm sorry. Oh, no. Um, okay. Well, those are wired. Yeah. So now... That's it. Let me clear out all this stuff out of the way. Okay. Put this over with Sports Jam, a game I don't even know. I don't know what Sports Jam is. Does anybody remember Sports Jam on the Naomi? I think it's like the Space Jam, but with games other than basketball. I was going to say, I know NBA Jam, but... I walked into that, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, I did. All right. Yeah, that... I still don't know what that's for. There's nothing on the Naomi that does that. <laughs> so this is... So Capcom made games for the Naomi, mm -hmm. but they had this extra... They, they made the adapter so that they could have all the pinouts for right. the way that their cabinets worked. So the idea was then, if you had a, a cabinet that was already wired for a Capcom game, so you had the kick harness and you had the JAMA, and then you had the stereo sound, because they used um, their American stuff uh, would be in a Dynamo cab. That was a company that was really uh, famous. They made really great cabinets, and that's what that's what I had. I bought an Aliens vs. Predator cabinet and ripped off the control panel and converted it and uh, and into a two-player six-button setup. And then uh, yeah, and then popped in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. 
Um, but, uh, but so the idea with the Capcom conversion kit was that you would then be able to take the Capcom games that were on a Naomi and then just plug them straight into your Capcom rig. Again, they all had these little ways where they were like, oh yeah, you can just continue to use the stuff that we have and it's easier than, you know, buying a whole new thing from that other dude. Please keep using everything. Yeah, please keep using it. Please keep being bought into all of our stuff. So eventually you end up with like three different converter boards going between different Well, there things, were only right? two. So there was this and there was the one that Sega made. Mm. And so that had different weird pinout stuff for extra controllers and blah, blah, blah. But also I think that's the one that they would use in Naomi cabinets for the interfaces for like Crazy Taxi and uh, Get Bass mm -hmm. and fun stuff like that that had a lot of proprietary control setups. Mm, right, right. Oh, what? Speaking of which, uh, do we need mm -hmm. to connect either of our start buttons for coin operation? Uh, I mean, we don't because I've got the service stuff there, so I can kind of test stuff. Uh, we'll 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 figure it out. I mean, it's somewhere else, uh, which is well. You also have some stuff over here. You know what? Why don't you connect the? Let's connect those two before <laughs> I plug this in, and then we'll see what happens. Right? Okay. Well, that's the reason I asked. Is I wasn't sure which color connects to what. None of us are. Again, I have the, um, uh, I moved my laptop, but I had the JAMA pinout on it, which really, I mean, kind of helps, but it's also, we have to trace it from there all the way out, yeah. and this is, this winds up kind of being easier. Uh, that's why I brought the multimeter. So let's see if we actually get anything out of the JAMA, since we have no power going into it, and just the USB. And again, you know, we might have to pump some power in it. One way or another, we'll know. I did turn it on, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's all blink there. Yeah, it's 60 hertz. So There's no time me. information, but it seems to work. Error! Hmm. System assignments. Sorry, look at that. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't think we can do that. Usually that's where... Uh, Oh, oh, we yes, did, we yeah, did. yeah, yeah. Monitor type, horizontal, yeah. advertise sound, sure, sure. We're keeping backup data, clock set. 1950, that's an interesting choice. Yeah, that seems like that you would maybe not <clears throat> go that far back. Yeah. Hmm. So is there no controller test? No JAMA I.O. board. Oh. So there's not power to it, mm. let's see. So that answers that. Oh, there's an input test there. Yeah. But, but there's no power, so it's not detecting anything. And you're going to reboot for us now, which we super don't need you to do. So that answers that, which means we kind of need to wire up the JAMA uh, power. <clears throat> Ian, can you just talk for a sec? Oh, I'm still here, hmm. uh, speaking to you through the microphone. Oh, yeah. Buddy, this is the fun bit. Um, well, we know we have to do some testing there. Whoa! For some, uh, just for some reason, Ian's mic was making funny noises. Oh, did I step on it or something? No, no, everything's fine. Okay. All right. So I got one, two, three. Should yeah. See, I don't know what you are for, Ian. Would you? Oh, testing for uh, all. Yeah, I'm, not getting getting levels from I'm just going to wiggle my things here a bit. Mm -hmm. Find out if it's a cable issue. Oh, there we go. Okay. So Whoops. We're continuing to wiggle the cable. Is anything coming through when I... Yeah, I, I got you now. Okay. Weird. Hmm. Wiggle it like you mean it, I guess. Um, 
Sorry about that. So, Ian, I guess the question is... Well, let's move yeah. this aside a little um, bit, because we'll... Uh, I guess I should disconnect actually, it. You know what, what we can do is we can probably just... There we go. Oh, yeah, that's probably fine. Yeah, sure. As long that as it works. doesn't jam the cables. I'm sure it's fine. So the question is, do we want to hook up another power supply, mm -hmm. uh, which I have? Is, so the, there isn't a rail on the power supply you have that would power that in? Well, that's the thing. There is, um, if I was connecting it, the idea with the JAMA, obviously, with this converter is like, oh, well, you would get power from this. But the GD-ROM kind of needs power from this thing. So one way or another, I have to have this mm -hmm. powering the board. And I can power a Naomi board from this, like, through all this fun stuff. But the question becomes, do I actually want to do that? Yeah, no, see, power is supposed to go this way, so... Out, and then... Yeah, that's actually an out. Ooh. That's not a that's not a backflow, so we can't... We don't need this to power the Naomi. And I probably should just take this off. Um, right. So that we stop thinking that we That's do. A thing. Yeah. So how are you supposed to power it? Is From the JAMA it? harness. Oh, I see. From an actual JAMA. So this basically takes up two plugs. Um, you know. So the problem is you don't have enough plugs on your on the power supply. Well, I mean, I could also. So what I could do is because we have the readout here of what the volt rails are. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you wanted to either clip this. And or splice. open this up again and splice, we could run it to the power rails and the JAMA, mm -hmm. and then we'd have the power we need there. Or you could Ugh. use this and connect it to the JAMA to power the JAMA. But then, so, we get, then we got the two power supply situation. Correct. And also we'd need another power cable for this. Because yeah, like this? this is old school. This is an old school like power supply for... Uh, The olden days. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is basically the really old school kind of power supply that you would wire into like a JAMA cabinet where you would mount it with these two. Mm -hmm. um, oh, hey, there we are. Uh, yeah, you would just like with here and here, you would mount it somewhere, whether it was on the side or whatever. And then over on this side, uh, that's upside down, you have all your power and your ground and everything, and then you would just wire it with two plugs to a power cord and then just plug it in. Or to a switch on the, on the uh, cabinet and then to a power cord. So, kind of cool, but um, I would really love to not use that. So, I think the smart money is probably to come off of this yep. connector. Um, and uh, I'm going to put this back in here. So we're going to need to pop that open. Oh, do you want to pop it open again? Oh, no, we don't have to. Well. Do you want to pop it open or do you just want to rip into that cable? Because uh, it's 12 volt and 5 volt. Well, here's the interesting thing. Mm -hmm. We can rip into the cable and we can block it off with morettes. Okay. But that doesn't stop us from soldering it directly to the power supply later to make it clean. Correct. Well, good news. So, yeah, today... We can do that, and then when I come right. back to clean this all up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm leaving a mess with you. Not at all. <laughs> uh, I feel a little bad about that. Apparently not bad enough to stop me from it, but, <laughs> but I do feel bad about it. Uh, come on, you. Why you gotta be this way? Nope. So the, the power supply just has the wrong kinds of outputs on it, eh? Well, it just doesn't have one for JAMA because it was built to go into, like, a Sega cabinet. And so this would connect to other stuff in that Sega cabinet that then would probably, through the Sega I.O. board, which I don't have an image of me off the top of my head, mm -hmm. but through that would... I'm going to sit down. But we're in a situation where the uh, the voltages are the same? Uh, yeah, the there's, rails, there's so. a 5 rail and there's a 12 volt. We won't have all of them, but I don't think we actually need all of them Really, uh, honestly, I think just having the 5 volt rail on there is more than enough. And that surprises me that they wouldn't put the 5 volt through the USB then. I mean... I mean it's, it just surprises me, it doesn't... <laughs> yeah, I don't disagree, but also... 
I'm not surprised yeah. because Dreamcast, how how fresh was USB at that point? It Dreamcast was, was 1999. Yeah. So when was the USB standard established? The, stand, the standard was probably established a little bit earlier than that. Yeah. Well, quite a bit, but I, yeah, the iMac was 98. Yeah, was that like a first big push for USB? It was. Yeah, so... So for it to be in this, like chances are they didn't bother to put anything through it other than like their input. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was actually surprised that there's just being here at all. Yeah, yeah. Again, I mean, I I don't normally see it on an arcade board at all, and this is one of those. It's yeah, it's got this weird. Exceptions. It's got you know USB. It's got SCSI. It yeah. It's got this JAMA harness. It's got. Yeah, all, all oh. sorts of weird connection What's systems. Hey, Anarin coming through with the factual knowledge again. Oh, hey. The Naomi's USB isn't. It's a system called JVS. Oh, but it's a is, USB connector. Yeah, RS-485 yeah. and has a different pinout. God, they're the worst. Yeah. See, that's, mm. that's a thing that I just, I can't stand that, where it's like, hey, there's this thing that looks, looks like what you want, but it's totally not that thing. Okay, well, we I remember back in the day, uh, the original Xbox, the controllers are USB. Actually, oh, just yeah. USB. They're just USB, but, but the pinouts totally, or the Or, or the actual the connector different. was yeah. different, so you could just chop the cable and switch it. Yeah. Yeah, I ended up, uh, I, I actually ended up uh, replacing the connectors in my hacked Xbox when mm -hmm. I was in Japan to be just straight USB on the front. I mean, the practical upshot of that is that if you got, because they had the quick breakaway, mm -hmm. If you um, oh, we can make quick breakaway connectors for just USB, anything. and you just unplug their thing and plug that in. Um, the reason that I uh, know anything about that is because people wrote drivers for the Steel Battalion controller. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because I mean, come on, playing Mech Warrior with that fucking thing. Yep. That's amazing. Be hundred percent. Yeah. Delicious. Super into it. I remember Matt had... I need these thing? to be saved. Okay. This is the one that can die in the fire. Okay. Um, so I don't remember which it is, but you should be able to figure yeah, it out from the oh. diagram. Please, please don't light it on fire. No, Ooh. we're not gonna... I don't want it to die in a fire. Six... Yeah, four, Matt had a Steel four, Battalion four. controller. I don't think he ever mm. played Steel Battalion. Really it was just the controller was so cool. Oh, I did. No, it was a great controller. I, it's actually uh, why I stopped pre-ordering at GameStop. <laughs> there we go. Because I pre-ordered it, and like that was a game where it was like you had to put like fifty bucks down on it, and uh, there was one guy ahead of me who had pre-ordered two, and I guess he paid in full when he pre-ordered, and they just gave him both, um, and because they only got two. And, and, and they had the gall to tell me, well, you know, he listed his other one on eBay, so you could probably buy it from him. <laughs> wow. Like, you work at GameStop, and that was your solution for, like, not coming through with wow. taking a fucking pre-order? Yeah. That you check eBay. They sometimes have games on there. It was basically the, <laughs> well, the other dude, you know, who bought two and was just going to sell the other one on eBay, you could probably buy it off of him. Like, you I are could. A but you so, were a game store. Yeah. Where so I, they knew that he was going to go buy it. And yeah, it. he fucking told them. And, yeah, so anyway. Um, Five volts. You ready for this? I'm... Burr, 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 burr. I mean, no, I'm not, but no. let's do it. Double check. Yep. Yes, 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 good. Boom. Here, do you want to strip some of that cable off? I would definitely. That's exactly what I'd like to. That's a, this is a much nicer stripper than I have. Uh, yeah, I honestly oh. got it for speaker cable. Um, really? Yeah, but it's it's great. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna need to pull up that pinout so, <laughs> so you know which wire. That would be really helpful. Yep. Sorry about that. No, nope, that's okay. Uh. So what are the, what do you have? Do you have the five, five and, a, and a ground? Five and a ground. Okay, perfect. So, this is way, uh, no, not this. Oh, we're not, good. We're not using right, this. That's that's I need out. to take this off so that none of us think that this is a thing A thing that we're using. Because it ain't. Right. So, right, that, you that was the, that. that's the out yeah. hole, not the in hole. Oh. Thanks, Paul. 
Look, you guys are just talking about strippers, okay? Hey now. Uh, Whether it's an outhole or an inhole, you're still gonna need a stripper. Yeah. Okay, so this is... Guys. Guys. Hold on, I gotta Maybe. find... Where the... Is this... is this our stuff? This I'm, might be our stuff. Given the shovel place? Yeah. Get out of my face! Oh. Spades, that's what they're called. Yeah. Why did I think shovel blade? See, this is why I don't like that they like did this twist tie down here, because you can't follow the cable down. Mm -hmm. I'm just having to look at like the beefier cable here, and that will tell me. There. So. Well, they put it to one, so that's helpful. Five. So negative five is green. That's a big thick green. Too. Yeah, it's a thick green. Uh, positive twelve is this yellow. Okay. Don't care about any of that. You want to go to uh... So the thick red is our 5 volt rail. Okay. There we go. Do you want to just double check that for me? Um, sure. Over here? Yep. Let's touch it on the... Yep, we're good. Okay. And then the black, the black that you have in here. Is there a thick one? Yes. Thick one. Thick one's the one you want to use. Shall we also check that? Just yeah. to be sure? You got it? Yep. Good. All good. Yay. Hmm. Unnecessarily clipping wires is something I like to avoid. No, it's fair. If I mean, again, that's why they have... That's why I have this, the um, spades. Yeah, so that they can easily on it, be. So that they can go onto that classic style of power supply. Which is good if you are working in a JAMA cabinet. Here we go. It's a really great cable stripper. Yeah. It actually grips them too, mm -hmm. unlike mine. Yeah, the which... grip and pull is. <laughs> the adjuster makes the difference though. Yes, I realize I just said that. And we're talking about strippers. I get it, but grip and pull, grip and pull. You have huge guts. It's, it's the case where uh, certain tech terminology in certain domains means different things. Yep. We're all just gonna have to accept that. Yeah. As Archer would say, phrasing. Oh, tiny wires do not. Play that well with Moretz. They they don't. Did you did you twist them together first? I <laughs> as much as one can. Sure. I mean, because they're right. The thing that I wonder about the net BIOS, which we should play with at some point, um, is whether or not you even need to have the GD ROM connected. I'm willing to bet you don't, but that's Something for future test us to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have to test that right now. I'm just thinking like about the, that and like because the idea is the GD-ROM yeah. isn't even sending anything. To that yeah, point. well, you're not. Yeah, you wouldn't have a GD-ROM connected. You would just have a. You would just be loading from this network cable. Right. So the GD-ROM part isn't even shouldn't even be necessary. Yeah, it's it's essentially vestigial. Hmm. The only reason I could think that you would need to keep it was if it had other security stuff where it's like, well, you're going to only have a net BIOS if you're with a GD ROM, ROM, but I don't think that's the case. Okay, that's somewhat secured. That's done. Yep. Um, so all of this other stuff, well, the black we know is ground, so the other stuff is power that we're not using. Uh, we don't need to do anything to it, right? No, we can just... And it doesn't matter if this action accidentally taps anything, let's, or should we maybe... Let's just cover it over, just in case. Yeah. But I'm... Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, here's the thing. I got piles of electrical tape if you want to just tape up the ends yeah. and be safe. Sure. Why don't you... Uh... I will take care of that while well, you can... Here you go. I mean, I'm not going to plug it in until you're done with that, but I will <laughs> plug the VGA cable back in so I don't repeat the same dumb mistake. And also, we don't um, really need to. I'm going to have to plug these other cables back into the power. Hey, everybody, thanks for That's being patient with us while we um, work our way through this.
Now the the controller, the the fight stick itself doesn't need power, right? That it pulls it. No, the... this doesn't need power um, for these switches, so to speak. That's all. They in are the jam literally just mechanical yeah, yeah. switches. Cool. Yeah, it's just kind of closing that circuit is what we need. And the same with the uh, uh, with the. Um, Joystick, or is that a separate? The joystick I don't have wired up yet, but yeah, it will be the same thing because all you need is this very low current, you know, right. signal here that, like, when you press the button, you're connecting the ground and the right. And that's like yeah. you were saying about the optical stick is the ones that actually the only one where you actually need to then run the five volt rail directly to it. Yeah, because it's actually generating a thing inside it. Yep. Huh, interesting. So. Again, quite beautiful in its simplicity. Yeah. But also we will see if this is a thing where it's like, no, you need to connect this to the, you know, to the JAMA harness, but I don't <laughs> think that's the case. Okay, ground, that is fine. Yeah, you, I don't think you have to worry about ground so much. And those are nice covered. Yeah, we're good. You good? Just as long as they're not inside the power supply. <laughs> One can only hope. Will do. Are you on, or did I just turn you off? Yeah, it sounds like the Samsung on, on yeah. noise. Take some of these, and... Do you want a twist tie? I've got an elastic band. Oh, okay, sure, that works. I guess that's probably better if you're gonna have to undo all of this <laughs> mess. At some point, okay. Well, uh, let's, of course. Of course, let's make this more difficult because then I need to string this around <laughs> everything. Oop. Uh, oop uh. Well, this actually we could probably move, right? Yeah. I haven't unplugged anything. No, that's good. All right. How's chat doing? I... Everybody good? Yeah, everybody's good. Everybody, uh, there's a couple people saying that uh, they prefer for they want it to be done right. So they're okay with it uh, taking a little bit longer. Good. If it's I appreciate be done that, properly. Everybody. Well, I mean, properly is uh, strong. Yeah. For word, various but. usages of <laughs> properly. properly. But hey, being safe, I'm all for. Safe, complete, and under control. Yeah. <laughs> under control. Control. That's funny. That's real funny. Yeah. I had not realized, honestly, when you were talking about switches earlier, that these mm -hmm. literally are just, yeah. could, it, it, you could use keyboard switches in yeah, these. Yes, you could. I mean, that's, that is yeah. all up to you if you like. Most in keyboard. It's the only way to play yeah. fighting games. <laughs> it's the only way to play Die by the Sword. Wait, ben, um, no. Ben, I do have enough cherry green switches that currently aren't doing anything and aren't enough to be a keyboard. That we well, that might happen. Yeah, if you want to play with that, but by all means. It's a Naomi two. It's got an error. I know there's no gateway. Oh, there's our business. There we go. No brand. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, input test. Switch, four players, 10 bit, no, four slot? No, I don't want, oh, I, there's probably a dip switch on mm. that I need to change. Okay. One. Hey, look. Hey, hey! Those are live. Each one of those is doing a different thing. Yep. yep. I like Analog, it. oh yeah. But they work. Oh, oh we found, yeah, so those were just wired to player. Player two, it looks like. So just the way the dip switches are set up, it, it thinks it's actually two players. Dip switch up. on this, it thinks it is a four-player rig. Next node, no more nodes, exit. Next node, no more nodes. <laughs> yeah, so it's set. Wrong. We already looked at system assignments, did mm -hmm. we not? But thankfully, that's just a matter yeah. of flipping some dips. Uh, press yeah. start to finish on the in the chat says, I just got here, and I've got to say, this would be way more of a mess if you didn't have the Capcom I.O., but instead the much more common 
Sega JVC I.O. There's a reason I like the Capcom <laughs> I.O. Now, where is your dumb switch? There it is. I can't read everything in there. Deep inside? Do you need a flashlight or anything? Oh, it's cute to, to the test. Actually, that might be useful, yeah. C-Sync versus Sync, don't care. Four player versus two player. That's, that's the one. <laughs> Boop. Do yeah, C-Sync. Do I don't care. Do we want to hmm? sync it to the C? What, it doesn't what? matter because we're not pushing video through it. So it's oh, like, okay. sync we could change right that all we want, C. but who cares? That's when you've had enough mm -hmm. of this console. And oh yeah. I hope you fall, on, fall into a C-Sync. Not, not you, or any of you, but... <laughs> Maybe you, but okay. not you. I can see why you keep losing camera people. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Not fatal. <laughs> yeah, two players. Twelve Ten. bits. So many bits. The bits. The bits. Well, that's interesting. Well, I mean, we don't have anything analog connected, yeah. but probably there are two things touching somewhere. somewhere I really dislike that it's like, well, what? Oh, see, that doesn't... Uh-oh. Oh. No, it's fine. We got some yeah, those, those all work. That one just doesn't... Is that still connected? Is that the red or the blue? This green. is the green. Yeah, it's still yeah, connected whatever. there. It's fine. So what would an analog switch be in this case? Like, what kind of things I'd... would be an analog switch on a device like this? Probably foot pedals. Yeah, or, uh, or like games. a steering wheel, maybe. Yeah, also yeah, that. stuff like that would be like your analog. Oh, hey, it stopped doing the thing. Well, there's a little wiggle in there somewhere. Oh wait, order. Hmm, fun, interesting things you learn. So, so some of the some of the buttons aren't working. Yeah. Well, I mean, we just don't have them all connected. Yeah because we've just got eight here. And so some of them registered differently because we switched it to... Um, two player? Yeah, yeah, to two player instead of four player. So if we were to say, connect the kick harness and then um, and then play, like normally... Oh, right, because there's only the three buttons that, right. are, allowed, that are supposed but, to... So the kick harness has the other buttons on it. Yeah, right, right. oh yeah, and there's a band on this. So we'll just get that off and I won't shove that in anyone's face. <laughs> And what did you not terminate here, you weirdo? Probably some of the other things that, I think there are some wires in this kick harness that can be used to control volume or something like that. I don't remember. Hmm. Like here, hold on to those for uh, me. Really? Yeah. And let's disconnect this. Uh, the kick harness doesn't have the grounds on it, though, so you need to use the grounds from the other thing. It does have grounds, oh, but, they're but we don't have terminated. to use them, because the other ones will be fine. A so. ground is a ground. Oh, no, I need to go back to the input test, don't I? But you can do this live, eh? Yeah, well, what, what, what we'd be doing if we shorted out these things would be just akin to pressing a button. See? There you go. Look at that. Beep, 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 beep. It's a button, but unfortunately, this whole layout doesn't tell me what friggin' button <laughs> that is, which is not useful. Usually, the game test mode will show you that stuff. But so, see, that's a button. Yep. Congrats, I found a button. Th see, this is not useful data. Congrats, that's, that's a player two. Another yeah. button. I mean, also, like. Right, because I think guess, is, depending on the game, those buttons could be mapped totally differently. I have those wires here. Oh. Yeah for the pin stuff, volume so up, the up. optional stuff is like the volume up and down and that was on a board. Um, but yeah, you could even take the uh, the ben, wires for a button Push and... Doop, doop, doop. Let's see if we got this. As, uh, as is often the case here, let me switch that. Yeah, so as, 
This came with the harness where they did this kind of thing, and then if you head down, you can see the pinout chart where it just tells us where it is on the connector. But uh, you could take the ground yeah. from the ground can come from wherever the kick because it all goes back to the same place. Yeah, and just one of these random buttons connect them, and you can see the, yeah. the button shows up. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, because it really it's not it's not sophisticated as far as an input system. It's just that now we have to kind of go through the trouble of all of this, and really, uh, the thing that we have to do at this point, which we probably don't have time for, is load something over the NetBIOS or change that dip switch so that it tries to load from the GD-ROM. Um, I guess I could do that. That's probably something we could try. That's, um, yeah, screw it. Why not? All right. Say good night, Naomi. We can give a satisfactory ending to the folks at home. As, as so often happens on Tinker Tailor in a weird way. Things don't go according no, to no, plan? No, no, no. I was just saying, in our chat right now, Mm -hmm. Somebody just uh, came into yeah. the chat called uh, uh, Press Start to Finish just came into the chat. It says, I am the head technician of an arcade. Oh. And a couple of months ago, I had to cram a Naomi with a Sega I.O. into a Dynamo cabinet. It required separate power sources for the I.O. board and the Naomi and a transformer for powering a oh. non-integrated audio board in addition to the transformer that you have to use for the monitor. God. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So it's it's I, amazing how often doing something on Tinker Taylor there'll be somebody who is like, like I am I that's my yeah. job what I you're doing have, right yeah. now. I had to do a worse <laughs> version of what you are doing right now. Yeah, I mean that's honestly why I just would be like, can we just buy a Capcom converter? It's way easier. It works better in a real cabinet. <laughs> can we Come just on. buy an Xbox and put it in the box? And then... No, you definitely can't do that. But like, this is the sort of thing where it's like, that's not really the game logic board. So it's less a like, well, it's not, you know, what is it? Uh, American Amusement uh, Machine Association, oh, AMA, yeah. I think, where you normally have a sticker from them that is like the, the serial number and all that, yeah, but um, uh, did you want a hook to attempt to make that a little bit easier to get the chip out? I think, uh, you know, I mean that might be smart, but I figured what I would do is take this off and not unscrew this Yay, all the way. That's so a... I'm not a total loss. Now that we know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny, Ian. <laughs> I in uh, I guess yeah, actually, I was thinking about in. In terms of making cabinets um, with consoles, uh, mm -hmm. I remember the uh, PlayStation 3. Um, we had, had friends working at uh, uh, elect Electronics Boutique slash mm. GameStop uh, when the PlayStation 3 was big. And there's the little cabinet, the, the, the like demo cabinet. Oh, yeah. But the problem is the PlayStation 3 um, ran so hot that you couldn't put a PlayStation 3 inside like a plastic bubble right, to show it, it off. Yeah. Did it melt the bubble? Uh, well, so the PlayStation 3 in the cabinet that you could see in the bubble was actually a fake one. It was a, it was a plastic shell <laughs> of a PlayStation 3. Oh, that's uh, so good. With, with, um, that's so with, good. With like, it just had like a piece of paper with the picture of like the ports on it. And oh stuff. my gosh. The real PlayStation wow. 3 was in behind underneath it with like a cooling thing that the was keep, <laughs> keep it going. That's so that's amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. bless. Yeah, when we did the uh, when we did the three PS3s video, uh, one of the PS3s was the was the was empty the case, plastic. <laughs> empty oh. case from inside there, which was like when we were doing like stacks of them, we would use the Put that, that one, one top. as the top. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, that's so good. I remember, was it PlayStation Two? I don't remember. I, I I'm trying to think of what it was, but I had a demo of I, I think it was like a Metal Gear. Metal Gear Solid 2 demo that hadn't hit the states yet, something like that, and I brought it to a friend who worked at a GameStop, basically, so he could record a little bit of footage and they could have it roll through, and, right. like, I hadn't played Metal Gear Solid in, you know, quite some time, so I was, understandably, garbage at it. And I got spotted a lot by mm -hmm. guards and things like that, and so it was amazing because he told me uh, that, like, the thing that happened the most 
was people would come in and be like, no, like they would basically start yelling at the screen because I was <laughs> so, bad, so at bad at it. They were like, what are you doing? Oh. <laughs> and I was like, well, I mean, that's, you know. It's like, I need to buy that game so I can show that guy how to play. Right, because that guy doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. It's like, hey, if it's a sale, it's a sale, you, I guess. You, 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 were, you were Twitch gaming years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, that's proto-Twitch gaming. Um, well, I want to leave that chip in there. Yeah, if at all I don't possible. Want to put that top back on it right now. Um, so let's see. Um, no, I have to spell it correctly. No. I'm surprised we never did a video about Pro PS Pros. Or Pro PS4s. Pro PS4s? Yeah. What are Pro PS... Oh, like the, the, PS4, the, oh, the PS4 Pro. Oh, yeah, the yeah. new ones. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, Pro, Pro PS4 Four Pro. Pros. Yeah, well, I don't know how... I don't know how you would... One and four and a half. <laughs> I have two PS4 Pros. Simply because the PS4 Pro is much more powerful than PS4. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I know. That just uh, fine. Show me the jumpers. <laughs> VM Show kid. me the jumpers. So I think the VM kid uh, in the chat is uh, posting mm -hmm. the picture of uh, the Xbox One E3 dev kit running Windows Seven, which is humorous, but we're, it, it's a little bit ironic given we're currently running or talking about the arcade board for yeah. the console, which ran Windows CE. Do, 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 so I basically have to reverse those three oh, jumpers. Okay. Do you have a little... Um, uh, a spudger? Yeah, well, just something that I can... Well, yeah, if I could grip yeah. them or... A pokey stick. Oh, actually. There's a nice little hook on the end of that. Ooh, fancy. Yeah. Thank you to Lord Hosk for those tools. They're very good, Lord Hosk. Yeah. Thank you. They are very good, comma, Lord Hosk. <laughs> eh. Ruined. Ooh, that's wiggly. It's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> I promise you, I haven't ruined anything. Everything is okay. Oh, damn it. No, it's just there's only one side that has a place where it can catch. So okay. I just need to take them all off. There we go. Bloop. And I wonder if it will yell at me. Well, I guess we'll find out, huh? When we, um... Yeah, no, I want that out. Or I guess, I guess we'll find out if it's going to yell at us um, for these jumpers and things. Mm. Uh, or rather, for that chip not being the one that comes right. with Guilty Gear. Uh, Which I have available if necessary. Sure, but I mean, why why would we do that? Yeah. All right. Well, that's together. This show is all about making decisions. <sighs> yeah, not all of them. Good. I did not qualify that yeah. statement. Yeah, regretting decisions is also part of making decisions. <laughs> Correct. <sighs> all right, that's good. I think we're set. Okay. Exciting. This is still on, right? Yep. Because it's blinking at me. Uh, and your cable's down mm -hmm. in between you there. All right. It's plugged in. Do yeah, let's... Uh, EGA's plugged in. Let's see what horrible mistake I just made. One shot. Always a good okay. sign. Nine we should be coming down from on high. Yeah, in a minute. Well, in theory, what it'll do is let us know that it's actually trying to load from the GD ROM oh, or yell at uh, us about the security chip. If we wanted to boot from the GD ROM, mm -hmm. we should, should we plug, plug the GD ROM, the GD -ROM in? in? Yeah. Hey! Now that I would unplug there. for though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. SCSI is notorious for Ooh. 
It did actually uh, in the boot did have the, the words GD-ROM system under the word Naomi. So hey, well, good sign so far. Mm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I fried it something on SCSI by help playing oh, at one point. Yeah, bad times. I remember when Fireware came out and we were given the we, we were told it's okay to hot plug it. Oh God, amazing. Yep. All right. Well. I'm glad I can continue my streak of forgetting to plug things back in. <laughs> it's... Hey, in a build like that, that's the easiest thing to fix. Yep. Mm -hmm. Listen, small miracles. <laughs> and... Oh yeah, sure enough, GD-ROM. Oh, different error. Option board malfunctioning. Well, that seems bad, That's, right? Yeah, less. The option board is currently in the process of malfunctioning. <laughs> yeah, okay, buddy. Well, why is that? Yeah. What's, what's the option board? I have no idea. I don't know what it's referring to. Again, I've never owned a GD-ROM, so... So I assume, let's check JVS, no. Still unknown title. Well, yeah, I mean, there's not anything loaded, so. Mm -hmm. that, or it might be that the chip is, you know. Uh, no, don't need that. Yeah, so. I mean, this is running, Okay. But there's no guarantee that... That was the option, uh, this, uh, error 26, right? We'll find out momentarily. Okay. Uh, here we go. 26. The Naomi board key chip cannot be recognized. Make sure you're using the correct key chip that meets, mm -hmm. that meets the GD-ROM disk. If not so, change the present key chip with another so one. So we need to change the chip, for sure. Yep. So what is the option, what was it? Uh, Error 34, then. Error 34 doesn't show up on this list. Was that what it was that we kept getting with the... Um... Well, that was the can't connect to the network one. Or can't connect to the server. Error 33, gateway not found. Yeah, that's it. The game okay. doesn't like the security pick chip you're using, or the pick is missing, only seen when netbooting. Hmm. So we have a problem with that chip? Or the, the PIC slash chip. Okay. So theoretically, well, the chip that was actually in that case should be what we want. So. Well, that would be the one for Guilty Gear, but that also means that it's possible this chip that we have is not good. It could also be that uh, literally but, a gateway isn't found. In that. Yeah. So a lot of options there. Yeah. Fun times. What we'll uh, need to do further further troubleshooting will be required. Yeah. Well, let's not keep everyone too long. Let's just pop that chip in and see if we can get it to recognize Guilty Gear. Yeah. Uh, this is probably okay, right, Ian? Oh, yeah. Wiggle it a bit on one side and a bit on the other. Oh. <laughs> God, that's monstrous. I love these old-fashioned, uh, or, or these error codes where it's like, error code 26, so there's an error, there's a number, mm -hmm. and then it's got a chunk of text. Mm -hmm. Associated with it. Oof. I'll take that's, care of that. Yeah, sorry. Nope, that's okay. That's monstrous. Don't let me ever do that again. Don't let me pull IC chips, everybody. I'm bad. But but it's got the like it's got the code and then it's got the text to go with the code. Mm -hmm. And the text they decided to go with the code is option board malfunction. Mm. And then you go and look it up and they say, yep. Oh, what that means is that the chip is, right. Oh, is, you have a bad chip. Yeah, the yeah, bar, Naomi the, board key chip cannot be recognized. Yeah, it's like that, guys. That's not helpful. Could, couldn't they have put Naomi board key chip cannot be recognized instead of option board malfunction? Yeah, which doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, I mean, the GD ROM also got made after the original system, so I think that's some of it. Is it going to be okay? It's fine. <laughs> Sorry. Nope. Sorry, chat. I'm sure everybody is really. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, assuming they saw it. If they didn't see it, then whatever. Well, it didn't happen. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's fine. We're all fine here. How are you? <laughs> all right. 
leave you with a journey Once more with feeling. That's true. I bet you could, I bet these days you could like make a chip that had it all loaded on, like had all the different codes loaded onto it and then it could switch between the different ones. There are definitely places you can get program chips for this. But, yeah. All right. Smear. Uh, the cable stall, the SCSI stall. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, given that the way that uh, you generally buy GD ROM games like this, yeah. you're going to be getting the chip with right. The, you always the disc get the anyway. chip with it, so that part it's not that big a deal. And hopefully, the chip is not you know just bare like this or missing pins. Yeah. Well, that would be really bad. <laughs> okay. Hey, look. Uh, things are connected. Yep. Yay. All the wires that need to be connected are connected. We got there. All right. Come on, let's... Let's give everybody a... Guilty Gear X. A little closure. <laughs> Man. Setting up to play a game on this is almost as bad as going to buy it from the PlayStation Store. It's almost Ooh. like you were meant to... <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like you were meant to put a quarter in it and well, yeah. play it. Have one game running for a oh, long time. Oh, 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 Here we go. So we're going through memory check anyway. Yep. It's pretty fast, though. Yep. Well, it's faster than the other memory check. You know, I find that interesting, actually. The, they... They're they, checking a different subset of memory. They're just checking the memory that you would then load the GD-ROM into. Right. But I, I find it interesting that for the Dreamcast, they decided mm. to use IDE for mm. the, the GD-ROM connection. And for the arcade version, they're using SCSI. Well, cheaper and also because, I mean, I don't know, actually. I don't know what their thought process here. It might have been the... Well, it's an arcade thing. We're mm -hmm. already going to charge them several thousand dollars. I think speed and reliability is exactly what it is. Yeah. Which is funny because I think the hard drives that had all the like pre-rendered stuff for, say, Killer Instinct mm -hmm. were SCSI drives, but also they were notorious for failure. Oh. Well, it's like, well, again, hot know. cabinet. Yeah. You're going to see a lot of hard drive failures. Yep. Hey! Loading is not that bad. No. Also, it works. It works across the board. Yeah. Well. So, well, once it boots up, we basically can then uh, mash a couple of stupid buttons. Yeah, we can find out how wrong our buttons are. Well, realistically, the thing that's useful here is that we can go into the test mode for the game and then test the game's buttons. Unfortunately, Guilty Gear is not a six button, if I remember mm, correctly. I... It's a four button. Your, so, your memory's probably better than mine yeah. is. Ben agrees, so... I'm not, <laughs> well, there yeah. we go. Ben knows. Yeah. Trust the Bens. Two Bens agree. Guilty Gear is a four-button game. Yeah, I mean, the wiring stuff isn't that bad on that front. It's just that which... What are you laughing about? I, I, I'm really happy that we very specifically uh, disobeyed the caution to verify your arcade cabinet is unplugged from power source prior to installing this cable for your safety. Oh, yeah. For your health. Yep. Um, yeah, but I mean, there's no... Yeah. The, yeah. We, we know there's nothing right. in there that's going to be a problem. But. I get what they're saying, but also, no. Yeah. Nope. Calculated risks is my father used to say. Oh. Apparently, later, once it's loaded in, later power-ups will be Nice. Faster. Sorry. Um. Oh, uh, <laughs> 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 I'm glad I was able to look around over and see <laughs> 70 and understand what you're saying. <laughs> but yeah, that's true. Once it's loaded in, every subsequent boot is significantly faster because all it does is just check the chip and the disk. Yep. Go, oh, we already loaded this, we're good. Um, otherwise, this would be interminable anytime that you had a power loss. As in the long arcade. as it maintains power. Right. Yeah. Right, because it's volatile. Yeah, there, there's not an internal yeah, yeah. hard drive, there's no. We're not writing to ROMs. Which well, I thought it was like flat. Well, I don't remember. Yeah. It'd be really interesting, by the way. Again, I never owned a GD ROM unit for a Naomi, so mm. this part is fresh to me. I did a little reading beforehand. 
Yeah, yeah. Just I guess that. Woo, checking memory again. Yes. As we were mentioning, that the uh, little coin battery that's in there is probably dead, so <laughs> that aspect won't work. But so, yeah, you might want to replace that. That one should be an easy one. Yeah. But speaking of rewritable uh, chips, have you heard anything about the new Amiga system? No. They are. They've produced a new Amiga, and oh. they've got the prototypes out. And. What, uh, it looks interesting. It's going to be compatible with old Amiga software and new software will be able to be written. Hmm. But what's interesting is that on each of them there, uh, I think it's called the Sharon chip or it's, it's some lady named chip that they're putting on boards. It inclu includes four of them. They're fully rewritable chips for digital signal processing. Interesting. That's, huh. Yeah, so the idea is, I think, to get Amiga back into that place of being a interesting workhorse for content creators, be they musicians or visual right. people. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely that. Right, but something else that's is pretty happening neat. now. Yeah. <gasps> okay. It bounced yeah. that time. This should yep. be into game now. Yeah, it should just go into a track mode. We don't have the sound set up to anything, but... Boot up. Uh, Press start button key to default setting. Uh, do we have a start button key? Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably not, but it, it's fine. Yep. We'll just go into test mode. Guilty Gear XX version 1.0. Oh, yeah. And then game test mode. Yep. Yep, I'm cleared. <laughs> Backup ROM cleared. Of course it is. Double exclamation points. See, there's our input. Yeah. Ooh, a password. Why would we do that? Key config menu. Oh, look. I found the start button. <laughs> cool. Yeah, start black. button is LT. There's a kick. Down. So we can... On. Yeah. So we can go down and kick. Well, I've got... And look, start. So what I've got... You need, so right? I wired... I wired... <laughs> I wired this stick to the top four buttons here. <laughs> that won't be a problem. Ooh, and that's the two-player slash. Yeah, yeah. All right, so one player can kick and one player can slash. Is that where we're at? Yeah, well, but one <laughs> player I can actually move I, around. I, I can punch. Perfect. All, All right. right. All right, hold on. <laughs> Sound test, game assignment. What is game assignments? Ooh, oh yeah, sure, of course. Win limit. No, no limit. limit. You can never Hard. stop winning. Iga Itai? Wow. I'm going to hurt. Uh, perfect. This is round time. Normal, slow, infinity. Neat. Oh, I guess you can make it do S loads more damage. Hmm. Sure. I guess just to make the game shorter? Shorter or longer. Yeah. <laughs> It's interesting. So somebody's cabinet could be configured differently. Yeah. You're like, I'm, o I'm always better when I'm at this huh. particular place. So you can fiddle with all of those things. That's neat. I guess how depending on how your buttons are laid out on the on, yeah. in the wood. Well, if it asks me to press start again. You know what it is. Yeah, I can figure it out now. Hmm. Is it going to send us back to the game? Oh, yeah, correct. It's going to do this, and then it'll go to the game thing. And it might ask me to press start again. But we know what that button is. Right. I think it's the yellow one. 2002. Oh, okay. No, I don't have to. Yep. I miss ADX. Yay. Mm. Oh, press start. Well, I want to see the attract, because... Then I don't have to mash four buttons to move <laughs> up, down, left, and right. Oh. Wow. So would the, if theoretically we wanted sound, is it just the RCA coming out of the back of the Yeah, I, I could just run that in and then. Would we get it out of the... Uh... There is RCA on the, on the TV. Do you have a... Um, oh, I need a mini jack to RCA. Oh, oh on the back of the TV. Oh, Bridget. Which, which one? I missed it. Bridget. Oh. I, uh... Do y'all remember Mike Z's combo videos? Yes. 
I loved his Potemkin, like, hey, I basically put you in a mode where if I hit you again, I'll kill you. Yeah. Like, all of that kind of stuff. But his MVC2 videos, oh my god, that guy, <laughs> so good. He was like, I'm bored, so I found ways to do infinites. I'm not going to just keep doing it. I'm going to do it enough that you get, okay, that's an infinite, and then I'm going to do something else because I get bored. Yeah. <laughs> like, he was great. <clears throat> Right. Yeah, this is definitely uh, Naomi. This is definitely Guilty Gear. Boop. Was it uh, LT? Oh, it might have been. I thought it was up here, but you're right. It's LT. These must be the... Whoop. And because we're in free, free play mode. Oh, yeah. Look at this. This is so going to... Oh, you're moving well. with the, uh -huh. the buttons. <laughs> oh, yeah. And... I guess we should change that to the uh, U.S. unless you just want everything to be in uh, Japanese, Ian, which is <laughs> understandable. Hey, Johnny. What's up? Johnny changed. Y you're going to get murdered because oh, I wow. can't do anything. Get zapped. Yeah, gonna get murdered by Potemkin. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, sure. Uh, sure. But I. Hey, I found a button. Yeah. Now it's dive kick. <laughs> right. Oh, sorry. Hey guys, this is about how I normally feel when I play this game. Yep, yeah, we're good. So what's in there? Okay. Hear anything? I've, I've got the volume oh, my up. my face. Ball. Is that into the right? It's into the headphone jack. Oh, uh, oh, then it should be not into the headphone jack. No, it needs to be in the... Oh, um, I see. It's digital audio. Okay, the I PC. A yeah. Hold up. I'm going to turn things way down. Thank you. Oh, yeah. It's way too high. Go for it. Wow. Well done. Oh, it's totally there. Uh, far left. There we go. <laughs> This is the best fighting game ever, when I can't control it. VM Kid puts 10,000 salty bucks on Potemkin. <laughs> oh. Ow, my face. So in case you had any doubts, Ben is currently winning by playing with buttons only on a vertical control surface. Also can only check. Yeah. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Are we going to have to change our game to Guilty Gear rather than Creature? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. No, because, uh, I mean, that's really it. But it works. Yeah. We've got sound. We've got video. Controls are yep. not Controls are correct, but are working. <laughs> but are workable. Yeah. That's the thing is, is we can adjust the controls and get everything yes. to function. So, Johnny, I'm just going to let you uh, get murdered. As, and a I'm gonna proof this of, as a proof of concept, this is excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically the only thing we have left to do is figure out the mess of wiring that I have and fix it for mm. this actual panel. And, and then we'll be in business. And then the secondary... The, uh, yeah, joystick well, the control. joystick, obviously. And yeah. then the second control just doing the same thing. Yep, pretty much. So, I mean, while we obviously don't have the time to do that now, we've got the core bits going and it clearly works. Yeah, we've tested um, the fundamentals. And yeah. So, yeah. nice work. Good, Thank nice you work for you. doing the hard work of the wiring to the power supply. I think it's if that was uh, easy compared to trying to figure out which of these wires to 
Can I, I mean, again, this is a trial and error process with this, and the kick harness at least is yeah. correctly laid out, but I, getting I, everything else together, yeah. I think we can say, at the very least, it was a hell of a team effort. So, yeah. Yeah. Nice well done. done. Good job, Paul. <laughs> good job, Paul. Good job, good job Ben. ben. And good, good job, everybody. Good job to all of you all at bands. home, especially those of you yeah. who chose to support us via patreon.com slash loading ready run or here on twitch.tv slash loading ready run. Oh, and is Twitch Prime now uh, everywhere? It is indeed worldwide. Yes, I'm, I'm assuming where Amazon Prime is. Yes, wherever, yes. Amazon, Prime. wherever Amazon Prime Friends. is available, I guess. So once again, we're very sorry about that those, those viewers on the International Space Station. We, we can't provide you with your free subscription, but the rest of you with Twitch Prime or, and Amazon Prime, feel free if you're interested, throw your subscriptions our way. We really appreciate it. And even if you don't throw it our way, it's free money that yeah. Amazon is giving you to give to, throw to, it somebody. to, yeah. give to yeah. Twitch people. So yeah. please use it. Don't <laughs> sit on it, it, does, it doesn't accumulate. Yeah. Yeah, it does not. Mm -hmm. But speaking of those of you who have subscribed, let's list off our appreciation. Wait, let's list off the subscribers and show our appreciation because the appreciation there doesn't decrease as the list goes down. <laughs> Got there. Yeah. All righty, we shall do that. Starting with... Ba -ba -ba -ba. Starting with this person's thing doesn't come up. One sec. Huh. Blade This, who subscribed for three months. Thank you for subscribing, Blade This. And Eric, for 42 months. I can't believe that's some sort of important number. It is. Indiana Joe, for 15 months, saying woo. And the Texan Reverend, for 14 months. Thank you, Texan Reverend, for coming back. Reinerd, for 22 months, saying just yesterday, I it said that I was on my 21th anniversary and I didn't have any notifications on billing. Whoops. Dr. McBoop has subscribed for four, five months. Happy five months and happy five months to you. Sprite Clad has subscribed for five months saying, guys, stop trying to build an after market ThinkPad doc. It just won't work well. I beg to differ, it works great. <laughs> this is totally comfortable for me. Drop Kickstart <laughs> has come in for nine months saying, Tinker Taylor, Solder, Sub Baby. Dark Morford is a 38 month subscriber. Fun with arcade cabs, cool technology. <laughs> Chemical has subscribed for 19 months. Thank you, Chemical. Dunkirk for five months. Good movie. Mr. Mounty is a, new, is a nine month subscriber and was a, one, a new one at some point. Full stop for three months. Thank you, full stop, for joining us, Paul. Huynh is a new Patreon subscriber, and thank you, as well as BatWoolX14 for being a new subscriber. And Anja Zeta, who subscribed for nine months, thank you. And of course, we'd like to thank all of you for those 500 bits, specifically RR Tycoon 2, Two Flower, Les... Less skunks. Less skunks. Less skunks, skunks, skunks than, than estimated. Than estimated. Splash from Irritant. Foxmar 320. Juniper P1. Elemental Alchemist. Thank you so much, all of you. So that's it for today's Tinker Tailor Solder Fry. Uh, tomorrow we'll have New Day Tuesday, which will start, I believe, with James, who's going to be playing the uh, new Telltale game, or well, the new chapter of the Guardians Against the Galaxy oh, right. Telltale game. Of course. The Guardians of the Galaxy. They're Guardians not, they're and not, the Galaxy? They're Edge. not against the Galaxy. Right. <laughs> they're are against, we sure about that? They're against people who are against the uh, Galaxy. Okay. Guardians and Galaxies. Uh, two, two, two Guardians, two, two Galaxies. galaxies. <laughs> and then after that, I think there's something else happening. It's a bonus stream. Player yeah. Unknown's Battlegrounds. James and company will get together for more bonus PUBG. Ooh. Then Wednesday we have Mine O'Clock, of course, starting at 9 a.m., where James and Rebellious Uno do Minecraft and the various Minecrafty Minecraftings that happen within. Watch and play. We got Watch and Play, mm -hmm. uh, which oh. I believe is going to be something fancy. Oh, yeah. I mean, I could tell you, but Alex might see it, so I can't tell you. Uh, but it's going to be really bad. It's going to be really bad. You're definitely going to want to tune in for this one. Yeah, I... Uh, yeah, it's going to be awful. 
And I believe uh, Crossing the Streams is going to be a continuation. It might be more awful stuff. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Um, yeah, I have to test a couple of things for that, but um, I'm sure, I'm sure I'll find some awful for for that too. So uh, everybody's going to suffer all uh, Wednesday afternoon. You might want to stick around for that. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, that's it for tonight. We'll see you in a fortnight. As we say every time, ever forward, never learning. <laughs> Hey, really? <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I, oh. I, I I didn't approve of that, but it kind of stuck. Oh uh, well, fair enough. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night. I've come up with a, a better slogan, but you don't learn, so there it is. It's true. Uh, oh.